everybody. It is Friday night. What's going on? It is time for the Skeptical Help Bar to open its doors again. Oh, crap. Damn. I'm knocking oh, shit down already. So hard. I know. I can't help. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I roll. Oh, wow. <laughs> right out of the gate. Oh. Uh. Can you tell I've been pre-gaming? Anyway. <laughs> All right. So we have a guest tonight. I'm excited. I'm excited about this guest and the topic that we're going to talk about because we haven't done this topic before. It actually came up in an earlier show, maybe like a week or two ago or something like that. Somebody asked a question about Chupacabra. Chupacabra. And uh, I, I, I don't know what I said, but I think I answered it and I said, you know what? Benton wrote the book on it. So <laughs> we're going to have to wait and get him on here. Yeah. He's the guy that knows everything about it. Um, but before we get Ben on, let me say that we're going to go through our rules. And let me put the rules up here. Let me find them. There they are. Because this is a professional show. So we have everything somewhere. Oh, <laughs> i got to find it each time. All right. So the rules are pretty simple. You guys know them. If you're new to the show, here we go. Rule number one is you are welcome to ask questions. Um, most of the time when we do Q&A, that's good for the whole show. But when we have a guest, we change it up a bit. And we, uh, we're going to talk to the guest for the first hour. We're going to have our pee break, which is the commercial break. And then we'll come back and we'll do Q&A. So you guys can put all your questions in. You can put them in early if you want to. Donna will save them yeah. for later. And uh, we'll get to as many as we can. Number two is that I don't know everything. Sometimes my guest doesn't either. Although he knows a lot more than I do. Um, but if we don't know, uh, if we have time, that's something quick. We'll look it up. If not... I'll write it down in my notebook, which I always have here, and I will get back to you. Uh, rule number three is that we follow the Pat Patrick Swayze rule here, and that means be nice. That's it. You can be in the chat room. You can disagree, debate, discuss, argue, but keep it nice. If you get out of line, start name calling, or if you are happen to be like a Russian guy that posts porn links, uh, Donna will kick your, <laughs> kick your ass out. Um, rule number four is if you do have a question, please put a cue in front of it. That makes it easier for Donna to pick out from the rest of the comments because we have an awesome and lively chat room and people get into conversations and stuff. So, uh, it goes by pretty quick. And then the last thing, the favorite role is to drink up. That's the most important thing to say. Drink up. Donna's got her drink. Beer. She got a drink on. Hmm. Yeah, water. <laughs> water. My yeah, here's my drink on. It's a pretty water. big bottle, but it is water. 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 That's what we say here. All right, let me put my special guest water. frame up you so I can bring in. Everybody too, oh, I should. Oh my goodness. Mention anybody. In Let's see. Tonight. Uh, we got Tiffany, Greg, Diane, Donna, Janice, mm -hmm. Jay. Uh, I'm probably gonna repeat. Bob, Robbie, uh, Jay. What's up? Tom, JD is in the house. Uh, I think I'm going to repeat somebody. Melissa. Melissa Kennedy. Kennedy. Oh, because oh, Melissa got Robert married Mary. today. Oh, yes, we shit. have a few Kennedys in yes, the house. She's a Kennedy. You all better stay on separate computers so it looks like we have more yeah, people watching. Yeah, right. You can't get on the same thing now because then you can't have your own conversations all right. either. I'm going to bring in my special guest. Here he comes. Ben Rafford. Or as, as his name says, Ben Chupasaya Jamin. <laughs> that was pretty good, Timmy. I love it. <laughs> I'm getting more buzzed. <laughs> hey there. What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. It's uh, gr great to great to be a guest on. It's always always fun to uh, chat with you. I I appreciate the uh, the uh, the shirt you got there. I yes, have my own. Like I got my own uh, Chupacabra shirt. Oh, so there awesome. you go. I love that. We could yeah, I could do that. So I yeah. actually. <laughs> I was, I was at work and, you know, because I work really hard all day and I don't goof off whatsoever. But when I did goof off, I found, I found some sayings and I was like, oh, and I sent a message to Donna saying, hey, can you make a shirt for me? Maybe by, by tonight. Wow. <laughs> and uh, so I sent her the design and she was able to, she did it up in, the, in her laptop and then printed it out Impressive. on the vinyl for me. And uh, made it, ironed oh. it on. So, boom, there you go. You know what gets my goat? El Chupacabra. <laughs> I just love saying that. <laughs> Diana should like that. Diana, look at this shirt I did in less than, what, two hours. Yeah. yeah. Very, Very impressive. 
All right. So for uh, just just you've been on this show a couple times. I think you've been on like this is like your third. Something like that. Yeah, I always try to forget it, and I always swear to I'm not going to come back. And then yeah. you're always like, I got those pictures. I'm like, all right, okay, okay, fine, I'll show up again. There you go. Know, <laughs> see, see, you know, it's always good to have some leverage on people because then you get them back. So it's all good. It's all good. All right, so for the few people that might not know who you are, can you give us a brief uh, origin story? Who are you? Origin story, sure. Uh, born in New York City, um, moved around a bit, um, ended up uh, getting a bachelor's degree in psychology uh, from UNM, um, and then I ended up at uh, University of New Mexico, where I currently live, um, and then I ended up getting a, a master's degree in education. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a research fellow at the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, formerly PSYCOP. Uh, and I am one of a handful of, of uh, sort of uh, quasi full-time investigators of unusual things, um, much like you and Joe Nickel and Massimo Polidaro and Jim Underdown and a few others. Uh, and I try and bring, uh, you know, critical thinking and, and, and skepticism to topics. Uh, and my particular interests are in monsters and folklore, uh, among many other things. But those are the, those are the, and ghosts and you know, whatever else, but that's, that's sort of what I do. And so, um, uh, I much, much of my day job is actually editing. So it's kind of <laughs> somewhat boring, but, uh, but the other parts of it are much more interesting doing investigations and, uh, and things like that. So that's, yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> yes, Bob, <laughs> this is the guy that yells at me constantly to work on my book, which I try to do. He also makes me sound smart. So when you read the articles, some of that is due to him. This is true. I'm, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but, um, uh, you know, as an editor, you know, I, I take some, some responsibility or credit, if you will, for, I'm going to try to put this delicately, but you should see the stuff that Kenny sends me before, like, you know, just keep in mind that what you see online and in print is not what he originally sent me. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, uh, no, but yeah, in all honesty, you do. I mean, sometimes when you send it back to me and I read it, I'm like, uh, yeah, that part does sound better like that. Okay. Damn it, bitch. All right. So, tonight we're going to talk about Chupacabra. So, how, I guess the first question I have is, how did you get into it? Like, what you mentioned you like monsters and, and, and stuff like that. So, I guess why in particular this one? Yeah, I mean it's uh, yeah. I think monsters were sort of one of my first interests as a, as a kid, as a teenager, right? I mean, I grew up and you know I was um, I grew up in a small uh, rural uh, town, actually only about uh, 10, 15 minutes from where I am now, and uh, there's it's mostly dirt roads and uh, you know uh, there's horses and this and that, and so it's rural area. And, you know, I was always interested in, in, in creatures and monsters, uh, but they always seemed very far away, right? There was Bigfoot, of course, which is mostly in the Pacific Northwest, although they've been sighted other places as well, but that's sort of where people think of it. And then there's Nessie, right? The Loch Ness monster up, on, uh, up at Loch Ness in Inverness in Scotland. Um, and there's, there's a handful of other sort of, you know, there's Lizard Man and Moth Man and Jersey Devil and whatever else, but those are the marquee ones. And they always seemed really far away. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm a 12, 14 year old kid. I'm like, I'm never going to go see, you know, the, the, I'm never going to go see Inverness. I'm not, not going to go see Nessie. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get up to, you know, Bluff Creek to see Bigfoot. Uh, and so I was always fascinated by these things. And then when uh, in, in the late nineties, when the Chupacabra became known and talked about, I discovered that it was in fact seen here in New Mexico. In fact, not far from where I am. And so that sort of gave me an, an entry into it, where it was something where it was something that I could actually physically drive to and and see the place where the Chupacabra is sighted and talk to people. And so it, it made it more accessible in that way. That's that's thrilling. I mean, because I, I, I have kind of the same coming up story where it's like uh, all these ghosts and things you saw because I grew up with In Search Of and, and Unsolved Mysteries. And all that stuff. And when you grow up and you see it, you see it on TV. It's like that's so far away. I'm never yeah. going to get there, you know. And and 
like the Winchester Mystery House was something that I always wanted to go, but that's California. And like to a 10 year old, that was like, you yeah, might as well be Mars. I mean, it's like, yeah, you know, exactly. exactly. You know, and, and when you finally grow up and you realize, well, I can drive there in a couple of hours or, or get there really quick, then it's like, boom. Oh, <laughs> suddenly I can do this. I can, yes, I can have fun. I can go see where it is and it gets exciting. So, definitely. I, I guess. I mean, and you have a big interest in folklore. I mean, you you have a background in folklore. What, what is it? What what do you a folklorist? Yeah. Yes, that would be uh, the most yeah. likely uh, description. Okay. Lorist. Folklorist. Huh. He's a lorist of I'm folk. Lorist, but, uh, <laughs> I've been called worse, but yes. Well, yeah, by me too. Um, <laughs> so, Earlier tonight, in fact. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess when you got into this, it's like, what was your first, what I guess, first adventure into this? In the Chupacabra specifically? Yeah. yeah. Well, there were a couple things. Um, you know, I had, uh, there were, there's been, you know, I've investigated, as you know, lots and lots of mysteries, um, and but most of them were things that the people had already done stuff on and stuff that was already a lot of precedents that I could right. sort of dig into. Um, and one of the first times when I really realized as an investigator that I could really bring something to it and solve a high profile case, and this is unrelated, but it, it sort of ties in, was the Pokemon panic. Uh, and for those who remember, uh, that was the case in 1997 when there was a bunch of Japanese kids, mostly kids, uh, who had seizures after watching the, the cartoon Pokemon. And uh, I, I won't go into the whole story. Uh, but, you know, you, you've, you've read, uh, there's a chapter in my investigations book on, but basically I, I researched it and I actually came across, um, uh, I came across, yes, there it is. Uh, and I actually more or less, you know, Bob Bartholomew and I sort of did some digging into it. We, we came up with a plausible and what's, considered to be the correct answer in terms of solving the mystery in terms of exactly what happened. And, and I did that despite not having a background in medicine. I, you know, I have a degree in psychology, but I'm not this and that and the other. And wait, anyway, the point here is that that was a time when I'm like, wow, I like th this is a, this has been reported all over the world. It's a widely known mystery. And I just by putting the time and the effort and doing the research and, and sort of bringing another perspective to it, I can actually do something to it. So that sort of, that sort of set me sort of made it, made it okay in my own, my, in my own head that this would be something that I could actually tackle. So, um, and, and the fact that Chupacabra was very recent and that was something that I hadn't really fully recognized when I began, because like most people, I assume the Chupacabra was always around, right? I mean, right. you know, real animals don't suddenly appear, right? It's not like the giraffe was first, you know, described in 1972 you know, in Angola, it's like, no, right. this is like, these animals have, they've been, they that's how, that's how this works. That's how evolution works. So the, the, uh, the, 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 when I realized that the fact that the Chupacabra actually had not been cited or reported or described before the mid 1990s was a big red flag for me. Uh, and in terms of, you know, where it came out, came from, but also in terms of making it a, a small enough data set that I could investigate. Right. So, I wouldn't even try to write the definitive book on Bigfoot. I, I mean, I've written articles on Bigfoot, but I just, it's too big. There's, there's, there's too, there's so many reports and tracks and hoaxes. And I mean, there's a whole, you know, it goes back to the, the forties and fifties, same with Loch Ness. I, the Loch Ness monster arguably dates back to the 1930s. Right. So, but because the Chupacabra only dated back to about 1995, there were only so many eyewitnesses. There were only so many sightings. There were only so many alleged finds. Uh, so that made it more manageable to me. I mean, it still took me five years <laughs> to research. Don't get me wrong. This was not a like, you know, this was not a Saturday afternoon, but it was it was enough where I was like, okay, I I I can wrap my head around it. I can, I can, I can figure this out. So that's sort of what got me on. Wow. And that I mean, you you were able to write the definitive book on this, which is this one right there so all right so you're you're looking into it this is a small enough case uh, small in quotes um <laughs> small enough case that you feel that you can tackle this yeah. and I, I guess you start looking into it start looking into the legends you you realize that it's it 
only goes back to 1995. That's amazing to me because I, I guess I, I wonder if it's just that the the evolution of the legend that, mm. that happens because like I, I feel the same way. It feels like that story has been around forever. And I I mean 1995, yeah, that that's we're talking almost 30 oh, years ago. Years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like in my mind, it's like that was like a couple of years ago what yeah yeah okay, like, okay. i know shush <laughs> <laughs> wow um <laughs> so i lost my great thought there oh yeah so long ago. i did turn 50 last week <laughs> happy um, birthday thank you yeah 50 years old you're a little bit older than me right just a little bit just just, just by bit. a smidge all right um but yeah it seems like I, I guess you start hearing the stories and then you get the, the I guess, the, the fear mongers and, and the, the storytellers in it. And they're like, oh, yeah, this goes back to ancient times. Right. And you get these these stories that develop that are based on nothing. So how did you determine? Right. Well, it was fascinating because um, I, I wrote an article for Skeptical Inquirer um, years ago, and uh, Celestia Ward, my co-host on Squaring the Strange, actually illustrated it. Um, and the the title was Pseudo Histories of the Chupacabra. And it was interesting because, you know, if once you realize that Chupacabra only dates back 30 some years, um, if you believe in it, as many people do, then you have to explain well, why did it suddenly appear, right? What, I mean, it, you, you're you like, <laughs> this, this is a problem for you. And so what I found was that that some people, um, not tons of people, but I, I found maybe half a dozen examples, people would, would essentially fabricate a history for the Chupacabra that didn't exist. So for example, um, there was uh, one, one guy that wrote a book um, about legends here in New Mexico. And he sort of wrote that, well, he, he sort of crafted this story of, of a chupacabra that was allegedly uh, seen and described in the 1800s uh, <laughs> and encountered by the conquistadors uh, who came to came to the, the settle the area. Another person, um, an, an, another, uh, another, and I remember, I remember very clearly I was, I was in, uh, so I traveled to, to di different places to research this investigation. I went to Texas for the TV show Monster Quest and there was an episode on that. Um, and I also went to Nicaragua and the jungles uh, between Nicaragua and, and, and Costa Rica. Uh, so I spent about a week in the jungle looking for the chupacabra there and also Texas, but also also in, uh, in Puerto Rico, where the whole story began. And uh, I remember being in, uh, in uh, a small university library looking for any research on the chupacabra. And I found this, um, I found this reference to uh, the Taino Indians, who are one of the early uh, Indians in the, in the Caribbean, along with the Carib Indians, uh, and there's a there's an illustration of these 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 Indians uh, with with the chupacabra on a spit roast, <laughs> as if they had eat, as if well, it's well known that these these Indians ate the chupacabra. I'm like, no, you made this whole shit up. This is this is, <laughs> but it was but it was fascinating because again, you know, people. It, it, it was so self-evident to them that that you know that oh yeah well, there's a whole history here to it and um and it was interesting from a folkloric point of view because i'm like wow people are like and not because they're trying to mislead anybody necessarily but because they're trying to tell a good story right right and so from a folkloric point of view i'm like well this is fascinating it's sort of retroactive folk chupacabra folklore but from an investigative point of view it pissed me off, right? Because I'm like, no, this is not, this is not a thing. You're making this shit up. I'm trying, I'm spending weeks and months and years of my life to try and separate fact from fiction. And you're just like, oh, well, we all know. I'm like, no, you're, this is, this should be the fiction sections, but whatever. <laughs> oh, I could, I could totally relate. I, I, I know that feeling, you know, when you're, you're, you put so much time into it and effort and, and everything and you you have the documentation you have the, the reports you you can link everything together you put all the pieces of the puzzle together and you have that you you stand back you see the big picture and then comes along anyone on youtube or you know on their website <laughs> because they're like oh look at me i know the real history uh, that that's what really gets me right uh, 
the true history or the history they haven't told you. Right. And and you you click on and it. your source is what? Yeah. Oh, you saw you saw a twenty minute YouTube video. Yeah. Well, clearly I don't know what I'm talking about because you right. saw a twenty minute YouTube video. So I'm chasing. Never mind. Hey, it, it's on YouTube, man. It must be true. Really? <laughs> must oh, be God. true. Uh, all right. So, I mean, the chupacabra. I love saying it. I love just. I just love saying the word. And your pronunciation is pretty good, actually. Thank you. I, I try. I've been practicing. He's practiced all week. <laughs> I, I, as soon as I left, I was like, he "Sorry, it you're good." I'm like chupacabra, chupacabra, <laughs> laying in bed in the dark, and it's like. <laughs> That's not creepy. Uh, all right, so investigation starts. You're digging yes. into this. Now you you did field investigation. You went down some of the places that you mentioned. Like, are you going down tracking down cases? Are you it's sightings? What? Why are you why are you traveling? Okay, there's a couple of things. So basically, you know, I began as many of my investigations do with, well, all my investigations begin with uh, one of these, a manila file folder. Uh, this is a, uh, it's not particularly, there you go. You got him yourself. So got him in here. yeah, ev literally every single investigation begins with me getting a manila folder, putting name investigation on there. And that's step one, because that's where all the information is going to go. Right. So do that and then, you know, sort of get the lay of the land. So a lot of archival research, uh, you know, Internet stuff and, and everything I could find. Um, and, of course, keep in mind, this is back in 2008 or something. So it's 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 much more because of the, the Internet. But at the time, there wasn't much on it. And this this is sort of both a, a, a benefit and a, and a hindrance because, you know, I was I was honestly expecting that there was a lot of information on it because, Chupacabra, right? It's famous. Like people are talking about it. So I'm like, well, surely, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's t-shirts on it for Christ's sake, right? And so I'm like, well, surely somebody has figured this out. And and uh, and that was the same thought process when I when I was looking into the Pokemon panic. And when I was looking into the the, the Mancy photograph of Champ, uh, that Sandra Mancy took in, in, in 77, the most famous photo of Champ. So there's all these cases when oftentimes I'll start an investigation, assuming usually wrongly that somebody must've already figured this out. Right. I mean, I mean, surely someone's put in the time and the effort. And of course, as I've gotten older and I've done more investigations, you and I both know Kenny, that the chances are that nobody's done any investigations. If they have, it's half-assed and it, it's up to you or me or, or Jim or somebody. So, so that's basically what happened. So, so the first step was to sort of get a lay of the land and and gather as much information as I could about the chupacabra, um, and just you know just collect. I literally just collected everything I could find, like you know books, magazines, online, blah blah blah. I put it in one stack and I tried to sort sort through it. And Ken, you're familiar with this process, right? So you're like, what are the different accounts? Yeah. Um, you know, what what are the people saying about? It? What are the main points? Where is their overlap? Where are their contradictions? Who are the main eyewitnesses? What are the main claims? And just sort of hashing all that. And of course, that that took months. Uh, and then the question was, okay, well, you know, what's 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 the history behind it, right? And so to begin looking into that, I began, you know, I, I quickly zeroed in on the fact that the chupacabra is a vampire, right? It, chupacabra means goat sucker in Spanish, so it's said to suck the blood out of goats and chickens and and things like that. There you go. <clears throat> Um, and, but that was, that was really fascinating to me, right? Because, you know, Bigfoot's not a vampire. Let Nessie's not a vampire. Um, you know, the goat man is not a vampire. The lizard man isn't a vampire. So among the creatures that were said to exist and to sort of be real in cryptozoology, the chupacabra was unique in that regard as well. Not only was it a very young creature, but it, 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 it sucked blood, right? I'm like, this is this is doubly fascinating and creepy because we got a vampire. So yeah. that's why I began my book looking at um, looking at vampire lore and looking at what do people believe about vampires around the world and specifically, you know, in, in, in Europe, for example, in the Middle Ages. So I, I begin my book, uh, I think it's chapter two or something, putting the chupacabra in its context as a vampire. And that ended up sort of being really useful. So, so a lot of it was like archival research. And it was, you know, folklore and this and that. 
And then I turned to the, some of the, I later turned into like the forensics. So like, okay, what, what does, bl what does blood drainage look like? Right. So, cause to, if it's a vampire, then we should have hard evidence, right? Because it, if the chupacabras do exist, and of course there has to be more than one of them, then they're literally leaving dead bodies. And if 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 a given dead animal, whether it's a chicken or a goat or whatever else, actually literally was attacked and killed by a chupacabra, we should be able to figure this out, right? This you right. can do forensic tests, you can do medical examination, you can do this sort of thing. So so you know, I, I interviewed medical examiners, I interviewed a pathologist and things like that. Um, and then sort of, so I, I, I sort of, I, I hushed, I sussed out, um, I sussed out the, the, the vampirism, uh, the claims about vampirism and the truth behind the vampirism claims. And then to, to, to finally get back to your question, which you asked, I don't know, 20 minutes ago. Um, so, so, at, so at this point, the, the question then became, okay, well, you know, if these things are real, right. So if, if the chupacabras are real, and again, I was. I, you know, and you know this, I didn't go into it trying to debunk this. I didn't go into it saying, wow, I hope I can disprove the chupacabra. I went into it saying, this is a weird ass mystery. I'm intrigued by this. No one else has done this. Let me see if I can be the first person to actually pull it all together to solve it. So, so, you know, that, that was my goal all along. Um, and so I wanted to take it seriously. Right. And so, you know, so what? I, that's, that's always the goal. Yeah, and, and I always stress that when it comes up, that's always the goal. It's not to debunk something. It's not to, you know, point fingers and go, ha ha, um, ha ha, uh, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I got you. I figured out your hoax or fraud or whatever. No, something like that. You're you're trying to find out where this story come from. Exactly. You know, I want to know the origin. I I want to know. That's that's it. And that's. And I also want to point out one thing before we move on. That when you talk about your files, um, so I can attest to how <laughs> this is going to sound dirty. How thick his files are, <laughs> because he sent you sent me one um, to go over. I think you sent me Champ, right? I, I did. Think, yeah, you sent me ch your Champ file, like uh, uh, just to go through it because I had asked for like pictures or, or something from you from your investigation, and you sent me the whole file to look over, and. I mean, no lie, it was it was maybe two, three inches thick. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I I lifted the box like, what the hell did he send me? And it was mostly the file. Um, so yeah, and I do the same, I do the same thing. I do have files in my file cabinet, which I do use. Um, and everything that I get, all the research, I print everything out, mm -hmm. pictures that I take. Um, I mean, most of the stuff that I don't use much film anymore, but um, if I do, the pictures are in there. But everything yeah. goes in that file so that even the notebooks, when I'm done, usually I keep it in the notebooks. But if I have a notebook specific for that case, that goes in there. And absolutely. Know, and that is so important. That is yeah. so important. Uh, and, and I, you know, I, 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 I totally commend you for doing that because it's I mean, and you and I both see this. Right. You see you meet some investigator and you ask, well, you know, where's your research? Or like, oh, I, I did it. I was there like. Okay, um, let me rephrase this. Where, how, how, how can I see what you did? Oh, I have some notes somewhere. I think I scrolled. Like it's like, no, this is not research. This is not investigation, man. And so, yeah, I mean that's exactly it. And so, and and I'm not me, <laughs> it's, and it's, and it's so. I'm trying. Like this is my file in the Conjuring House. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it, it's. It's it's about an inch thick, uh, and but, and you but, and you need to do that because the sorts of investigations we do. Number one, sometimes you end up calling people, you know, not calling people liars, but you end up disproving something else, and you want to bulletproof your work. Right. And so, if somebody right. comes to me and says, "Hey, Mr. Radford, I saw on page one eighty seven of your book, you say this," the answer is, "I'll be right back." Where did I get that? It's right here. Right. Look it up yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a good comment. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Yes, <laughs> yeah. good one. Good one. Wah, wah. But you're right. You're right. You can go back to your file and say, look, I here it is. This is it. 
Um, and this is and this is what I think separates. I mean, not to pat ourselves on the back, but I think this is really what does separate us from from a lot of the 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 this the you know the, the other investigation, the paranormal stuff. Like they're not doing good research. They don't they don't don't have to do good research for the most part. And they're not keeping track. They're not keeping files. They're they're not. They're just sort of doing this half-assed ad hoc stuff. And that's and you know and I have to believe at some point that that the work that we put into it. Um, will stand the test of time. And and when people go back and look at your work or my work or Joe's work over else, uh, years from now, the stuff that's st- the, the stuff that's still being read and still being discussed is the stuff that was well researched, not the half assed stuff half baked on some YouTube video, not the half assed stuff you know that's cut and pasted from the internet, but the stuff that actually says, okay, this is what this is, and and you know, and here's the references. Right. All right, <clears throat> back to Chupacabra. Okay. Um, all right, so... Yes, uh, thank you, Pasquale. There's my... <laughs> <laughs> nice. That is, is quick, but... That's right. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so, so to back up, so in terms of the investigations, right? So so there's a couple things. So like I said, I went to... Um, I, I traveled some for it. One of them, as I mentioned, was for the show Mystery Quest, or Monster Quest. I was on Mystery Quest yeah. as well, but that was different. And so basically, anyway, so as I'm researching the Chupacabra, I'm finding uh, a handful of, of, of uh, people that claim to have found one, right? Uh, so there's only so many sightings. Most of them are like, you know, it is said that or, you know, unnamed, unnamed right. person said blah, blah, blah. But when you whittle all that down, uh, there were maybe three or four or five people that were sort of key um, eyewitnesses or somebody that had something substantively to do with Chupacabra that kept coming up and over again. And one of them was a woman named Phyllis Canyon. And Phyllis Canyon, uh, she became known as the Chupacabra lady. Uh, she's in uh, Cuero, Texas. And I won't go into the whole story about her, but um, I, anyway, I'd heard about her because she claimed to have found a Chupacabra uh, outside of her ranch in Cuero. And uh, and so I got a call from the TV show and they're like, well, would you like to go interview Phyllis? I'm like, absolutely. It's like, you know, yeah. and plus on top of this, you get to like, you know, see a chupacabra body, which, you know, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do. So uh, in a handful of times uh, in, in my career as investigator, I was able to sort of piggyback on TV shows. Uh, okay. I'm like. Hey, it's your dime, man. It's like, yes, yeah, send me. You know, I went to uh, you know Lake Okanagan for to look for Ogopogo for National Geographic. I'm like, yeah, you pay for the hotel, you pay for all this. Let's do this, right? So, so I jumped at the chance to to do the TV show. So, so we, we me and the producers, we, we flew out to I think it was San Antonio, and then the next day we went to go see Phyllis, who's a a, a lovely woman. Um, Anyway, I anyway, so she, lovely woman, not not necessarily the not necessarily the the most critical thinking person, but anyway, so we, so we we go to her house and so we're we're interviewing her, and then so on camera they're like, okay, well then we're show us the chupacabra. So I'm like, all right, this this will be cool. I finally get to see this chupacabra. She's like, okay, well I only saved the head. I'm like, all right. So I'm thinking it's like stuffed or like some so. So we, we 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 go back to her ranch, and you may have heard me tell this story before. So we go back to her ranch. I'm laughing because you're like you may you you may think <laughs> that she preserved it or stuffed it, and that just your wording alone just is like oh fuck. Well, so here's the thing. So so I'm looking. I'm I'm like all right. Let's let's go check out this the chup. So so we we she takes us through the house, which is a beautiful you know t- typical you know, uh, Texas ranch type thing. She goes into the garage. She opens up her freezer. She takes out some ice cream, some (laughs) hamburger patties. (laughs) And there, behind the ice cream and the hamburger patties, wrapped up in a plastic bag is a frozen dog's head. Well, (laughs) I'm sorry. I chupacabra head. So she (laughs) pulls this thing out. (laughs) And there, there's photos of it in the book uh, around, I don't know, you can you can look for yourself, but there's there are photos of it there. And so she pulls this thing out and uh, I'm like, wow, this is number one, horrific smelling um, and <laughs> and creepy as hell. And but I'm like, all right. So she shows us this thing. And, and again, I mean, it's it's interesting. It's clearly that it's a clearly a canid of some sort. 
Um, mostly hairless, although not entirely hairless, contrary to what she'd claimed. Um, and so she pulls this thing out. I'm like, all right, Lori, there you go then. So um, anyway, so that's uh, <laughs> th that was the trip to Quero. Um, and then for this, for the anyway, to, to go back to your question you asked a couple hours ago. So the reason I went to to Nicaragua. Oh, do you have a photo? You want you want to show it to the? I'm looking. I'm, I'm making sure that I'm trying to find my glasses so I can see because I can't read the writing. It's an old man. Ah, uh, the severed head of a cur cur Quero. Quero. Okay. Yes. So there's. <laughs> There it was. I have a, the color photo for anybody. It's it's even more gruesome in, in color, as you might imagine. <laughs> um, so anyway, the, and the, I have a whole section on 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 that chupacabra and Phyllis in the book. Um, long story short, uh, she she wanted to have DNA tests done on it. Uh, when that was done, she didn't like the results, <laughs> as you might imagine. Uh, so. So she so she then uh, she then paid for her own analysis. Oh, she also didn't like those results. <laughs> but anyway, so oh, yeah, it's, it was a whole thing. So anyway, I'll, I'll it's in the book. But anyway, so then for so to, to go back to your question, so um, I, so I wanted to take it seriously, right? And so I'm like, okay, well, logically, if the chupacabras exist, and I didn't think they did, but you know, I'm trying to be open minded. So if they do exist, then there's a couple things that they would have to do. They would have to have access to uh, to a, enough blood to sustain themselves. Right. Um, so, uh, so they have to, I mean, they, they can't be in some rural area where there's no, there's nothing that's eating blood. They would also have to be in some place that's, that's fairly remote. Uh, Cause you know, they're chupacabras aren't, aren't sighted in cities. Um, and then the other thing, the other thing that, that really made me zone in on Nicaragua was that uh, was that in Nicaragua in the year 2000 was the first time that the four-legged, the, the quadruped version of Chupacabra emerged. And we can get into that later. But before that, it was basically this bipedal, spiky-backed, alien-type creature. And again, right. I, I can talk about the origins of that, and you know it well. Um, but, but so that was between 1995 and, and 2000. But what changed in 2000? Was that on a ranch in, in in Nicaragua, outside of Managua, the capital? So uh, that's, that's what you're talking about, right? Yes, that was yeah. the original. Um, uh, that's a pretty pretty close example. Of that was uh, of the original chupacabra that was okay. cited by uh, the first eyewitness, Madeline Tolentino. Um, but in, in the year 2000, it, it suddenly changed form, which is itself pretty suspicious. Um, and suddenly in 2000, you you the the chupacabra became this this mangy looking dog or coyote or fox and again it was in nicaragua and so um i wanted to go check it out and i as you know i love to travel i love to spend time in the jungle amazon and elsewhere so i wanted to like yeah <laughs> let's go to let's go spend time in the in the jungle around nicaragua so uh i went there with my father uh who's a journalist and uh and he he also speaks spanish and also my friend chris uh, and so the three of us went down there, uh, partly partly for vacation, but partly to to search for the chupacabra. So right. we hired a guide. We actually went to a a bio preserve, which is off limits. You actually have to have a permit to go in there. And so I hired a guide to look for tracks. And there's a again, there's a photo in the book of me and the guide. Um, and uh, so so we went. We spent about I think five days in the jungle. Um, Lots of mosquitoes, lots of giant ass bugs, uh, no chupacabras, <laughs> but you know, but it was, it was important to me to make an effort. All right. I did. I, I wanted to be able to say, um, you know, if someone says to me, well, did you really look like I did look, I, I seriously did. This is a place where chupacabras have been reported to be seen. Um, there's belief, there's widespread belief in chupacabras in Latin America, particularly in Mexico, Nicaragua and elsewhere. So Again, this this wasn't like a joke. I mean, it was a sincere a sincere effort. Now, the fact that I didn't find one, <laughs> that doesn't mean I didn't make an effort at it. So, anyway, is, so then important. so then that's, there was that. That's really important. I mean, that, that's that's how I feel. That's that's why I I think that's why our standards are so high because it's we're not just bullshitting you saying, oh yeah, I looked. Yeah, you know, you you actually went there and and were in a jungle looking for this thing. I mean, I I and. I, I do the same thing when people ask, like, do I really go Bigfoot hunting? Have I ever actually looked? Yes. 
I'm going yeah. out into the, the woods where sightings have occurred. And I'm looking specifically for this. I'm spending days out there looking for this thing. Right. And if if somebody comes and, and I've looked for Bigfoot as well or in, in, in lake monsters as well. And of course, if the answer is, well, OK, but you just did a half assed effort. You're only there for a couple of days or a week. My answer was, well, you've been at this for 22 years. What did you find? Yeah. <laughs> Do we get to say? OK, yeah. so. <laughs> uh, all right. So moving on. Keep going. Yeah. So anyway, so so I, I did that investigation, and then uh, as as my investigation sort of wrapped up, and again, there's lots of different aspects and tendrils, and you know we can go into it in more depth. But basically, as the investigation wrapped up, I had pretty much decided that I I had a good handle on on the chupacabra, on what people were saying about it, on the different forms it took, uh, you know what the, you know what were going on. But the, the last part, really, the the missing piece for me. And this is maybe two years into my investigation. Was where the hell did this come from? Right. right? Where, why, why, why did it suddenly appear in 1995? And and you know when you and I worked on the entity case, um, you know this is one of the this is one of the contexts that this is one of the things that as investigator you have to look into, right? Because weird shit doesn't happen in a vacuum, right? There. It, these things happen in a cultural and social context. Right. Uh, and, you know, for example, you can draw a pretty clear line between the Amityville horror uh, and the exorcist and the conjuring stuff and entity. I mean, it's all, it, it's all there. If you, if you, you find all the parallels. Yeah. yeah th th it's right there. And so, and, and that doesn't mean that's the only way to look at it, but it's a very useful way to look at it when you sort of put it in context and you see what else is going on here. Right. So, so, it, so, Again, the, the the final piece of the puzzle that I hadn't yet figured out was where did it come from, right? Okay, I, I don't think it's real. The evidence just isn't there. There's no, it, you know, I, I, I track these things down. The the claims about vampirism are, are, are sketchy, this and that. But that doesn't answer the real question is why did it, why did it appear in 1995? Why not 19, you know, 1992 or, or 1970 or 2050? And why did it occur in Puerto Rico? Why not? Why not Brazil or Boston or you know Philadelphia? And so I was trying to sort of. So I, I spend a lot of time trying to look at the cultural factors surrounding uh, surrounding the the emergence of the chupacabra when it was first sighted. And again, it was so the, the very first. So part of the part of the key was identifying the 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 index case, right? The the original first sighting. And as you know, Kenny, with a lot of cases, there's one or two like high profile, like marquee cases, right? There's like, there, there's, there's lots and lots of smaller ones, but there's one that stands out, the Patterson film uh, yes. for Bigfoot, uh, right? The, 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 you know, the yeah. entity case, there's all sorts of stuff. In, in the case of Champ, uh, like Champagne Monster, it's Sandra Mancy um, and so on. Oh, no. And in the case of the Chupacabra, it was the original person that that first saw it like ever who's a woman named madeline tolentino and uh and i kept coming up across her name but she sort of vanished right she she told this she told the story of seeing this thing uh in the second week of august uh 95 and she sort of made the news uh and and then it sort of passed her by and it the story took on a life of its own and then it was it was cited on on the x-files um, and then it was on this TV show called Christina, which is sort of like the, the, the Latin American version of Oprah. So it sort of began being seen and talked about elsewhere. So the, the Chupacabra story, when it, it, it sort of escaped, she, she got lost because nobody, nobody talked to her anymore. It wasn't, I mean, they didn't, they didn't diss her. She, she, the even story, though she, the story took a life. On, uh, yeah. On. And. And and they had no, there was no reason to go back to her. She right. so she was she was basically a footnote in the chupacabra entity in, in the whole phenomena. But I said, hold on, she can't be a footnote. She created it. She she's I mean she's literally the first person to ever see this. So don't <laughs> don't overlook her. Track her down. Talk to her. Get get her story. I mean, so you know it it, it doesn't matter what people were sort of talking about. The chupacabra was. You know, in, in in 2012, much more important to the story is where did the chupacabra come from, and why did she think that? Why did she say and think that she saw it 
1995. So that was so that was really the, the where where the investigation took a took a turn, and where I focused on on looking at the origin of the story. Okay. And you you delved into it, and did you get to talk to her? I did. I did. Um, so I actually tracked down. Um, um, I actually tracked down her ex husband on Facebook. So one of the good times when Facebook was useful. Um, Dude, Facebook uh, is useful for a lot of shit like this. It really is. The whole the so side note here, the Home Alone Elvis Presley in Home Alone story. Yep. That we we worked on. Yep. So the break in that case came because I found the gentleman's son on Facebook. I actually found the gentleman first, the, the guy that actually is, quote unquote, Elvis. I found him on Facebook, but he had passed away. But his son had commented, and I was able to track him down through Facebook and, and talk to him on the phone. Um, so yeah. I mean, Facebook is, yeah, it's filled with a lot of bullshit, but <laughs> hey. Now and then. No, and that was the grace for, for, for people who don't know. So this was one of the cases that I, I, I sort of... so. So I tried to, I, so it was a skeptical inquiry column and somebody asked me about whether Elvis was in home alone and I did my best on it. I said, well, you know, here's the reasons why I don't think it's true. But I said, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what the final answer is. So Kenny's like, well, if Ben doesn't know, let me see if I can show him up and solve this mystery. So sure <laughs> enough, sure enough, this prick takes his time and takes his effort. And he's like, well, well, you know. Boom, think, baby. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So, <laughs> anyway, to, to to be fair, so in in my most recent book, Big If True: Adventures in Oddity, um, I do have a I do have a couple pages on that, and of course, I I include your I include your 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 solution. There you go. You're in there. So, yes, <laughs> it's all good. I mean, it, that was a, a joint effort. I mean, I it was I, it was you had information, and I just I just built upon your work. So. It wasn't like I, and that's I, how science works. That's how research right. works, right? You work with right. other people. So anyway, so long story short, so I, I so I tracked down Tolentino, um, and uh, and so I wanted to go to again because as soon as I realized that Puerto Rico, because I had always I thought it was a Mexican legend. I, I, I like a lot of people. I thought, oh, it, it came from Mexico because it's Chupacabra. Why wouldn't it? Right. That's that's the the general idea. That right. The the story the. the the, the what is it um the the stereotype kind of thing yeah where it was like yeah it's, it's Mexican right yeah I mean that was that was my assumption and then when I realized it was Puerto Rican um uh, like well this is an interesting twist to the story right and then uh and so I so I I flew to, to Puerto Rico for a couple reasons number one was to interview Tolentino because I wanted firsthand right and and again this is so important is is when possible seek out original eyewitnesses don't go by what somebody said they said don't go by some third hand bullshit. Go when possible to the original source and sit down with them and say, tell me your story. I, I'm, I'm curious. I, you know, I really want to know. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I speak decent Spanish, not great Spanish, but it's it's good enough to, 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 to get along and conduct an interview. And so I, I talked to her and uh, she's very nice. I met her and her ex-husband uh, and uh and uh, we, she took me to her, uh, she, she's now since moved, but she took me to her home at the time where she was living with her mother. Um, and she, there's a photograph in the book of her at the exact spot where she said that she saw this chupacabra and she has this very, uh, it's, it's a, it's a whole thing. I'll, I'll, if you want, I'll, I'll talk more about her, her sighting a little bit later, but in a nutshell, she, she said that she saw this, this figure outside of her window um, and, uh, she said that she's recently been sleeping. So it wasn't clear whether she had just woken up or there was, there was some connection to sleep that she mentioned, but she saw this thing. Uh, and she, she, she gave this very detailed description, including the fact that it had no anus, zero anuses on the original Chupacabra. Cause that's what I'm looking for. You know what? This is a, <laughs> this, this is a Jeopardy question. My friends, if it's ever on Jeopardy. Yes. What the Everybody. answer is zero. Okay. Um, how many anuses did the original Chupacabra have? <laughs> Correct. None. <laughs> so that's that's yes. Right. yes. There she is. Yes. 
Uh, so I, I interviewed her, and again, lovely woman, very nice. Um, uh, and I talked to her, and 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 you know, again, I I I I made it clear that I was, I didn't I didn't say I'm Mister Skeptic. I'm like, you know, I, I'm I'm, which was true. I hadn't written the book, obviously. I was still researching. I'm like, you know, you're tell me your story. You 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 yeah. launched this whole thing, right? This is, and that's really rare, right? It's it's really unusual to be able to track down. The exactly. person that, that started this whole thing, right? right? I mean, on occasion you can, but usually it's like somebody from the 1930s or the 1800s, they're dead or who the hell knows, whatever else. In this case, there was a very clear, specific person who who was the first person to ever see this thing. I'm like, this is super important. Like, you know, uh, you're you're really important. I mean, I, it's like <laughs> in, in, a, in a weird, creepy, not, you know, way. And so again, I mean, I wasn't flattering her. I mean, just but to the story, she she was she was key. So uh, so I, I talked to her, and 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 um, anyway, she she later changed her story, and I can get into that a little bit later. But basically, um, she said that she saw this thing, but then no other eyewitnesses. So it happened in the middle of the day. She didn't know the exact date. She said it was the second week of August, um, and but she didn't know the exact date. And she said that she and her mother saw this. And in one version of the story, she actually said there were several eyewitnesses. Um, and then in another version she, that she told me, there was just her her and her mother. Hmm. But nobody else saw it, no photographs, this and that and the other. And then she said it basically sat, she got a good long look at it, and then it sort of jumped or flew or skipped away. And she said all three of those things, but it wasn't clear how it, it could have done all those. Anyway, so so she, 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 she had this description of it. Uh, that's really bizarre and unique, right? Is that that the spiky back is sort of like, well, this is um, this is a very here's an example of the. Cool. Uh, this is actually a fairly. Uh, this is uh, similar to what she she said. It was actually you know bipedal and more alien like. I um, love that. I want that. I I bought this is the very first chupacabra I ever bought uh, in on uh, I got it's on eBay and in fact if you look on the inside, uh, this is actually the same one that you see. I, I photographed this model in my backyard. So, nice. um, anyway, so, uh, so anyway, so again, long story short. So, you know, she's telling me the story and, um, and I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, what's going on here. Right. And so, and I had, so the, the, so I was trying to figure out, okay, well, wait, you know, nobody else saw this. Nobody's seen this before that. And I want to be crystal clear about this. Cause I've had some, there's been some confusion about this. So when I say that there is no chupacabra before 1995, that does not mean that there were no vampire stories before 1995. Yeah. Because of course there were. There are vampire stories dating back centuries yeah. all over the world, including you know in in in, in Africa and in in, in in Europe and elsewhere, and also including in South America. And you know in 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 my book, I talk. I have a section on on uh, Latin American vampires, which are an interesting thing. So th I'm not suggesting that there were no vampires, because of course there were. Nor am I suggesting that there were there was no mysterious predation, because there is mysterious predation or predate animal predation all over the world. Anywhere where people are tending goats or sheep or chickens or cattle. There are animals that prey on those animals. I mean that that's just that's just how this works. So what I mean by that is that is that the the was that 1995 was the first time that anybody said that anything resembling this was the chupacabra. Um, there was uh, and this is there's been a little bit of confusion. So that there was there was, actually was and this is another piece of trivia. There actually was a reference to a chupacabra on an episode of Bonanza. Oh. Yeah, and uh, and uh, crazy talk, right? So as it tur turns out, again, we go into the folklore here. So th so that that part of the story is true, but the chupacabra they were referring to was a whippoorwill whippoorwill bird. Oh. Uh, and so oh. and and the legend was that this this particular bird sucked the milk, not blood, the milk out of goats. Uh, and so the 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 the, the lore around uh, the bird was that it would it would it would you know go, go to a goat that was uh, giving milk and it would suck it would suck it dry and of course 
there's there's lots of folklore about birds, right? Omens, uh, ravens, and stuff like that. So the idea that there was this this lore surrounding a bird is is itself you know pretty common. But I want to I want to be clear about that because every now and then I'll see people saying, well, you know, the chupacabra. There's early re early references to it. No, there aren't. By chupacabra, I mean the the vampiric, blood sucking creature that was described um, and and still seen today. So as far as I can tell, there are no pre nineteen ninety five references. In fact, sure. I've offered five hundred dollar reward if anybody can find a a pre nineteen ninety five printed reference it could be in a journal it could be a, a newspaper magazine oh, oh, Take oh your pick. there you go I got get on it battle get on it my weekend is booked uh, <laughs> i need a case of monster uh, and that's it I'm there just, you go you, you just want to get my 500 bucks yeah so um <laughs> so doesn't get done <laughs> well so here's the thing right so so i, I I'm, I'm i'm parsing through this and I realized something very quickly, which is that what she what she described seeing is unlike any known animal, right? There, there, there literally is no animal that looks even remotely like this. There, there just aren't. Um, it just, it's just, and especially if you go, and again, this is this isn't quite accurate. There's there's a better uh, drawing in the book, but for example, the spikes down the back. Right, a stegosaur might be the most most recent example, but there, there's, as I looked into it, in you know, getting into and you know, zoology, there's either she so badly missaw or misperceived some normal animal that that you know she might as well have said it had you know twenty legs, right? Or, or, or what she was describing was not of this earth. I mean, literally, just of imagination or something else. Anyway, so so I'll, I'll cut to the I'll cut to the chase here. So, um, so in researching it, I came across there was there was a sort of smoking gun moment, uh, and it came in in a book by a guy named Scott Corrales, uh, who's a uh, who's a, a researcher, uh, Latin American researcher, and uh, unfortunately he declined to be interviewed for my book. Uh, I think partly because he knew it would not reflect. <laughs> really well on on him but um in his book so uh, he, so in his book he, he he provided an interview with madeline tolentino the first sighting uh in in 1996 shortly after her sighting and it's it's really useful um and it's it's a very in-depth thing and it's actually it was actually an interview conducted by ufo buffs so early on in tolentino's sighting in the original chupacabra sighting uh, her sighting was was talked about, and it became tabloid fodder, right? So it was like it's sort of the 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 it was is a um, um, a tabloid called El Vocero, which is sort of like the the Latin the 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 port the um the the uh, Puerto Rican version of like the National Enquirer, okay. and so they were always running these dramatic, lurid, sensational, dramatic stories about chupacabras, and part of the reason was that some of the first people to interview Tolentino after her sighting. Were big were 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 uh, I was going to say Bigfoot believers. They were UFO believers, and it was it was the the group uh, headed by a guy named Jorge Martin, and he and his group believed um, that that the Puerto Rico was being constantly visited by aliens and extraterrestrials, and so this is why to this day, and I, again I, I go into details in the book why to this day the original Chupacabra origin story has lots of UFOs and extraterrestrials mixed in with it was because was partly because uh, Jorge Martin and his group, they were trying to sort of shoehorn her sighting into what they wanted it to be, which is an extraterrestrial sighting. Anyway, so so I, I'm talking to her and and I realized, uh, so she told me and, and she also told uh, this other group back in 1996 that she's and she's very clear about this, and I uh, the quote is just gold. Um, and she says basically that um, that she says, yeah, I saw this this creature. It was very strange, and it looked a lot like this this monster I saw in a horror film called Species. And uh, and again, this had been mentioned in a couple places, as mentioned in in Scott Corrales's book Chupacabras and other other stories. Uh, but it was sort of just like in passing. It's like, you know, uh, and by the way, it looked a lot like this 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 monster in this movie. And as I'm talking to her, I'm like, hold on here. I, 
you you're telling me i'm not putting words in your mouth you're telling me that what you saw looked like something you saw in a movie she's like yes i'm like okay let me make sure i have this on <laughs> make sure i have make sure my tape recorder's on so uh so i i, I said okay well this is I, I had seen the movie Species. It came out in 1995. Had Ben Kingsley, Michael Madsen, um, uh, Natasha and, Henstridge. Uh, hold on. I got a picture here I can show you. Um, it's just a model of it. Yes, so, there's still. You can get the... Uh, so... There it is. I, I want to... So... Kenny, you're 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 a you're a half you're a halfway decent investigator. Tell me tell me what you notice about this particular uh, image here. Like, if you're just looking at it, like, do any features of it stand out to you? Spikes on the back. Um, well, there's that. There's that. Um, claws. Sort of long head. Yeah, long, long. Yeah, bipedal. Like Medusa with her like. Yeah, yeah, Some yeah. Dreadlock stuff yeah. going on there. Um, but very alien, very alien creature like. Um, so yes, yeah, I mean, I, it almost looks like a human woman with scales coming out of her back. Yes. Now, now you guys know who designed that, right? No. H.R. Giger. Who is he? Swiss. Uh, he's a he's a he's a Swiss artist. Um, Giger did uh, he did a cover for Emerson Lake and Palmer uh, among many others. He he designed the creature in Alien. Okay. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the guy. Oh, I get it. A uh, little okay. short guy. Uh, he's he's he died uh, years back. He always looks constipated. Uh, <laughs> really interesting work. Uh, there's actually a bar, the Giger Bar. I think it's in Germany or something. Anyway, very sort of you know sort of sexualized, creepy. Uh, I think biomechanic, as, as I think when um, a xenomorph uh, that JD Sword mentions there. So, so it was fascinating. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, well, hold on here. So like, you're telling me that this 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 thing connects there, and so I, I took a closer look at it, and I realized that that she's exactly right. I mean, again, I'm not I'm I'm taking her, her word, right? She's she's telling me that that what she saw in real life looked a lot like what she saw in a movie. And again, having a background in psychology, having talked to eyewitnesses, talk, you know, knowing about confabulation, knowing how memory works, uh, I recognize that, of course, often, not oftentimes, but sometimes people will misremember things that, that happened in their personal lives. They'll, they'll remember things that, that literally didn't happen. They'll, they'll remember stories differently and so on. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, you can actually find cases where people will, will misremember something that, ha that they saw in a film or a TV show as part of their own. The, their own, you know, their own memories. It's not it's common. Not it's not. Problem. <laughs> it's not pathological, <laughs> but it's it's a thing. So, so, um, so, I, so, so when when I saw that, I, I again, I, 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 I go into it in, in the last chapter, but I saw all these parallels, like in in you know in the creature's origin stories, in what she described, and it just it just it all fit, it all clicked together when I saw that. And the, really the key here was not only, so really my contribution to solving the mystery in terms of the origin was just putting, was just connecting the dots, right? Because, uh, again, nobody could go and say, you put words in her mouth because she gave, she, she told somebody else in 1996 exactly what I'm telling you. So I, I didn't, I didn't twist right. her words from my hypothesis. I dug up something that she said earlier and i said this all fits so the fact that that she saw this thing is not a coincidence it's 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 a cause and effect thing and so yeah. that's why that's why the that's why the, the chupacabra uh looks like that was that she she mistook something that she saw in a film for real life um and there, there again there's more to it than that i'm you know you can you dig in the details um but and you know and and by the way when i met with her uh, she's a huge, huge film buff. So I went. She, uh, she we went to her house. She has movie posters, horror films, science fiction films. She loves this stuff. She lives this stuff. This she she this, she was immersed in 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 the fantasy and science fiction horror. So this wasn't just like one off thing. Right. This is one of her main hobbies and interests. And so I I connected that 
And, and then at that point, I sort of felt like I had enough to sort of pull all together and say, okay, I think this is what happened. Okay. And I, did you mention the film, the film came out in 95? Yes. Yeah, so this is, this is another, th another, so this is one of the questions I had to deal with was, well, hold on here. Right. Um, could she have seen it? Um, and this will go back to what we talked about before, right? Like bulletproofing our, 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 our investigations, right? Yeah. So, so this is one of the things that I always do is is I always anticipate what are people going to criticize me for, what are they going to try and poke holes in, you know what? And you do, <laughs> and this is, and you do this too, right? And so this is why I, I criticize. You know, I don't crit, I but I I try and say highlight stuff like, okay, well, did you look at this? What about this? Right. So it, if somebody comes back and says, what about this? Do you have an answer for that? And so, um, so it was important to me that I, that I connect the dots. And so, for example, um, I needed to be sure that she had seen the film before a sighting. Right. Because if the sighting came first, then my hypothesis falls apart. So, for example, if she had seen it on, on VHS, of course, there was no, there was no DVDs in, in 1990, right. uh, mm -hmm. 1995. And so I, I, I spent, I don't know, an afternoon <laughs> digging into the, the release dates for species. Uh, and, and as it turns out, it was not available. Uh, so literally the only way she could have seen it was, uh, was before her sighting. She, she, she didn't know the exact day, but she, she gave a time frame the second week of August. And sure enough, species opened in Puerto Rico before that. Yeah. So it, it all sort of, you know, came together. Um, and, and so I, I think that's probably, uh, you know, I think that's the answer to the origin of it. And that was a big piece of the puzzle to me. That's awesome. All right. We are going to take our pee break because we're, we're running late. I, I see a few people mentioning it like, Hey, we're, we're a couple minutes past. Um, we're going to empty our bladders. We're going to come back, fill up our cups. We're going to come back and get into some Q and a, uh, there's a bunch of questions that we have and I want to make sure we get to as many as possible. So, I'm going to play my commercial video, which is about three minutes long. And we are going to do all that stuff. And here we go in three, two, one. Do satanic cults lurk in the shadows? Can memories of satanic ritual abuse be repressed? Do exorcisms really drive out demons, and are those demons always possessing Zach Baggins? I'm J.D. Sword, the Satanic Skeptic. Join me on The Devil in the Details as I examine these questions and more, bringing a skeptical and satanic perspective to the paranormal. The Devil in the Details, available on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, and more. Japan for us. Japan for us. Are you tortured by what you see and hear about the paranormal field? Join us as we critically examine and question paranormal claims, science, ghosts, demons, cryptids, UFOs, ghost hunting technology, and much more are all on the table for discussion. Three Tortured Souls is a video podcast that streams live on Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 Pacific.
Alright, who did you been all fancy like ooh? Normally I I I never just because I think it's unprofessional, I never drink while I'm uh I, I know this is gonna sound weird to you, but I, I never drink while I'm uh talking or even before. Uh so this is the exception. So I this may be a little known fact, but like I drink on this show because that's the premise of the show. That's no, I get that. Bad. Yeah, skeptical but, help bar is what it says at the top. Yes. I mean, that's that boom. Um, but I do the same thing when I, I'm on other shows. I don't sure. actually drink. And you do the um, same thing at work and while you're yeah. driving. I get it. You know, whatever. You know, like I don't judge. That's, that's it. Like I, I usually have a cup here when I'm doing if I'm a guest on another podcast or, or something, but it's filled with regular tea, not special tea. Um, well, here's the thing. I I, I remember the, the uh, one time I, I saw Christopher Hitchens give a talk, and he was sloshed, as you might imagine. I mean, you were thinking when wasn't he sloshed? Right. But it was it was remarkable because I, I've always I, I can't say I've admired, but I've always been impressed with people who can who can do that. I I, I couldn't. I'd, I'd be like, oh my god, in my but I just you know. But yeah, so um, I I he have neither his command of, of knowledge or or ability to, uh, to to hold my liquor that way. So um, <laughs> I'm making I'm making an exception for you. So there you go. Plus it's Friday night. Yeah, there you go. I mean you have you have to drink here. I mean I, I do offer that the option. You don't have to. I mean you can drink whatever you want because some people just don't. So rum and coke, buddy. Rum and coke. Rum and coke. Damn right. Rum there you and go. Special Cheers to the captain. Mm. Mm. All right. I so, got water. <laughs> Don's got water. I filled up. All right. Uh, let's get to some questions here um, because I love the story. I, I've heard the story a couple times, I but I love it. I mean, it's a fascinating story. I love the detail that you went into, and and like you said, I mean, you gotta you gotta show your work. So traveling to those places, talking to the tracking down the original witness that's to me that's like fascinating I'm, I'm i'm always hooked when i hear the story all right so first question up is jd oh shit this guy <laughs> um, i know can we, can we pass on him is there somebody else yeah, let's okay. get him through. <laughs> uh J, jd is a great guy I, I love him um do you recall how you first heard of el chupacabra i believe unsolved mysteries was my first exposure after it already penetrated the zeitgeist, uh, that's a that's a good question. I, I I honestly can't say the first time when I heard the phrase. Um, uh, obviously, it was after ninety five, but uh, I suspect it was uh, the X Files. Um, I, I I'll be honest. I was actually never a huge X Files fan. Um, I didn't dislike it. I was always kind of ambivalent towards it. Um, so. Unlike a lot of skeptics who just love every episode, I mean, I saw it now and then. It was fine. Didn't love it. Didn't hate it. It was all right. But I think that that was one of the first times when I had actually sort of crossed my like, oh, this is this is a thing. Okay, I love the X Files. I, I I did love it. I wasn't like you know I gotta have everything that they put out and you know I gotta buy everything. But I do have I do have like the encyclopedias and stuff like that so well yeah and, and it was funny because because uh chris carter came to uh, came to uh, cfi one time and i met him and and he was he was nice and it was kind of cool but um i remember giving a talk one time uh it was actually on a cruise and um and uh and so i was giving a talk and uh, i i mentioned the x-files and in the back of the room was richard dawkins and Richard, uh, he, partway through my talk, you know, if you're going to interrupt me, you better be Richard Dawkins. And in, in, <laughs> and so in, in so in the back of so in in the back uh, in in his imitable just sort of gentle uh, gentle voice, he he uh, he voiced displeasure with the X Files because uh, I said that because I, I think it was during the Q and A, and I said, well, you know, again. I was always kind of building about the X Files. It's fine, you know, whatever else. I didn't, you know, I and so I, I think the question I was asked, not by Dawkins, but by somebody else, was if I thought it was harming society. I said, not really. I mean, it, it's fictional. It's entertainment. I mean, it's 
I don't think people are mistaking him for a documentary. Uh, and and he sort of raised his hand. Actually, it was kind of funny because uh, I, I asked people to identify themselves. It's like, if you can raise your hand, like, say who you are. And yeah. of course, he's he's like the star speaker on the entire cruise. I'm like, I'm sorry, you are? <laughs> it's like, it's like Richard Dawkins, like, yes, yes, go ahead. And he's like, well, I have to tell you uh, that it, anyway, his, in his opinion, uh, which is fine, he, 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 he had a, a slight problem with it because he, he, uh, he, he complained. Well, he, he mentioned that, um, that his problem with the X-Files and probably other, other TV shows of that ilk were that, um, that the skeptics are usually proven wrong. Right. He's like, well, you know, I mean, in, in the X-Files world, these things are real, usually, not always, but usually. And so he's like, well, this could be a problem if people, it's, in other words, I, I think he was complaining that it wasn't like 50-50 or usually right. skeptical. Yeah. Um, and uh, anyway, um, so make of that what you will. I mean, the X-Files, I, I, it's, it's entertainment. We knew it was, it was a drama series. Yeah. On the stuff that we love to investigate. So, yeah, I mean... I, I loved it, but I knew it. I, I didn't take it as real. Yeah, and I mean, this is and this is. I mean, if if you've heard, if you've listened to my podcast, Scoring the Strange, you know that this is this is one of my bugaboos, and I won't get into it now. But I, I'm always amused and slightly annoyed by people who claim who complain that uh, TV or films don't reflect reality. Um, when I when I see people complain, you know, I'll go, you know, what you know, what this movie got wrong about, you know. Richard Jewell or American Sniper. I'm like, it's not a documentary. It's not. It's right. It's not claimed to be a documentary. It's it's a it's a it's a fictionalization of a real historical person. Uh, that you know, th this person may have existed, but the dialogue is made up. Blah blah blah. But anyway, it's that's a separate thing. But I, I in general, I agree with you. Okay. Uh, so Diane, did X Files do a Chupacabra episode? Yes, they did indeed. I believe it's the uh, I think El Mundo Giro, I think it was, in Thank 1997. You. I'm reading it. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to say this. <laughs> there, there you go. That's why I'm here. So, um, All right. I'm going to put the link in the chat room. So this is the IMDB page for it. So you guys can look it up and then watch it later. All right. What else we got there, Divine Donna? <laughs> uh, Bob. Do they have any cute names for the Chupacabra like they do for Nessie and Champ? Uh, good question. Uh, I, I haven't. Uh, I think that probably the, the closest is <laughs> there's a cute little Chupa. Uh, the pro, the closest is probably just Chupa, uh, which of course just means suck. Uh, and again, careful, <laughs> careful what you Google on that, right? So uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that was that was one of my mistakes when I when I was I was looking for um. I was looking for uh, for for slides uh, for for images for one of my slideshows. I typed in "goat sucker." Don't do that. Do not do that. Take my word for it. Tap, You're going to thank me later. Do not do a Google image search for that. Anyway, um, so the answer is uh, is is not really um, because it's 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 sort of like you know keep in mind that the champ is named after Lake Champlain. Nessie is Loch Ness. And chupacabra, um, it's kind of hard to cutify it. Um, chupi uh, it would probably be <laughs> chupi <laughs> would, would like probably that. be the closest. Yeah, I like that. All right, moving on. <coughs> moving on. Moving on. Uh, Red man, what's up, Red man? Over the roughly twenty-seven years since the first setting, did you find anything that intrigued you? Yes, absolutely. Um, there were a couple of things that really, a lot of it was stuff that I had suspected. I mean, you know, I had done some research on animal mutilations and cattle mutilations, partly because I live in the Southwest and this is sort of the lore around here. So I kind of, ex I, I kind of expected to, to find out what the, what the, the actual forensic answer to that was. But there are a couple of things that really intrigued me. Um, one of them was, uh, well, one of them was the uh, the DNA test I mentioned earlier that Phyllis Canyon had, because again, she she's claiming, and to this day still claims that she found a chupacabra, um, and and you know, and I'm like, okay, well, let's let's test this thing. <laughs> we we have forensics. We could do mitochondrial DNA. We can. I mean, this is this is a thing. 
So I was intrigued to find out, to, to sort of see in real time what the results were going to come back. Because I, I didn't know at the time. Like, right. obviously, w- when the book was written is in the past tense. But I spent five years researching this. And so during that time, I was kind of waiting on pins and needles because I'm like, I don't know what this is going to find. I, I expect it'll be a canid, but let's find out. So I was intrigued by that. And then another thing that intrigued me was um, was how the chupacabra was used uh, by religious people. Um, and so, because the chupacabra, you know, it, it, it's sort of many different things to many people. So in, in some contexts, the chupacabra was sort of seen as a Satan or the devil. And I talk some in the book about that as like Pentecostals, of which, by the way, Madeline Tolentino was one. Uh, Pen- the Pentecostal church, uh, in, in Puerto Rico at the time was not all of them, but some of them were, were using the chupacabra as, as an example, like this is from Satan. You've been bad. Uh, <laughs> and because of your wickedness, you know, searching for porn or whatever it is that you do, we now have the chupacabra. Thanks. <laughs> um, so your punishment is your, your, your goat will be, <laughs> your goat will be a drain of blood. That's very um, typical. <laughs> right and and so 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 it was so the chupacabra was used uh used in, as a, as a as a as a religious thing and in fact one of the chupacabras ended up in a creationist museum uh and so a guy that i i talked to uh, a guy in texas who had actually stuffed a, a, a taxidermy he's a taxidermist he uh a, a, he, he, he taxidermied an alleged chupacabra that was then bought by a guy named like john adolfi and last I heard, it was it was this <laughs> this this stuffed um, you know coyote, I think it was, is in this creationist museum. You're probably wondering, yes, why is there a stuffed coyote in a creationist museum? Well, <laughs> silly you, you need to understand okay. that <laughs> that scientists were wrong with chupacabra because they said it didn't exist, and yet here it is. Clearly, and those same scientists believe in evolution. And so if they were wrong about the chupacabra, because here it clearly is, then obviously they could have been totally wrong about this whole evolution thing. Uh, so so that was that was something that intrigued me. Uh, I'll tell you one other quick story, which is that um, a couple years back, in terms of things that intrigued me, uh, a couple years ago, I did a, I did a show uh, with Josh Gates. I think it was Destination uh, Expedition Unknown, or I think Destination yeah. Truth, one of the two. And this this was, I think, 2019 or something. Um, and oh, there we go. And uh, and he's pointing. His, and so um, so uh, they they flew me out there for for a TV show. And, uh, and so I, I met with Josh in Puerto Rico and I spent, um, I think a little under a week there. And as part of the, as part of the TV, cause of course they need to have it be, you know, dramatic for TV. So, um, uh, and th- there's l- lots of different parts to it, but, but part of it was that, so Josh wanted to film in caves and the, the connection between caves and Chupacabra is kind of tenuous, um, that's one of the places that people claim chupacabras go to. Like when you say, why aren't they seen? It's like, well, they live in caves with okay. dragons and Elvis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so they, they interviewed. So, uh, so uh, Josh's producers found a, a guy who claimed to uh, have seen some mysterious, well, he actually, I think he called it like a, was it a gargoyle or something? So he, he, he himself didn't call it the chupacabra. But it was it was sort of put in the context of chupacabra, and the story was that he'd been deep in this cave, um, and uh, he was down this cave, and he saw this thing, and it scared him, and he ran at getting out of the cave. He hit himself on the head and knocked himself out. <laughs> <laughs> and when he came to, uh, he uh, he told the story of what he'd seen down in the cave. Now I I met the guy. And I, I believe he was hit on the head. I'm, I'm trying to be diplomatic here, but um, I that part. So I, I, I suspect that part is that is, is true. Anyway, so so as, of course, you know, for TV shows, they have to be dramatic. So Josh is like, "Hey, uh, are you willing to go down in a cave?" I'm like, "Yeah, this is like, ju- let's do the jungle, man. Let's do the cave." I'm like, "This, I'm your man. Let's do this." So he's like, "All right." So we go into this cave. 
and and along with the 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 guy that saw the gargoyle slash chupacabra slash whatever the hell it was, and uh, so he's he's like taking us into this cave uh, to show us w where he saw this thing. So we go in this thing, and we're all we're all hooked up, and and of course on TV it looks like it's just the three of us, but of course there's there's lights, there's there's audio guys, there's PA's, there's some dude eating Cheetos. It's not quite as you know dramatic and and scary as it may seem. So so we go down there. And the first thing I come across is mounds, mounds, literally tons of bat shit. <laughs> so, so, and it, it was really guano. cool. Um, guano? guano? Guano, yes, bat guano. guano. So you yeah. go into this cave and, and, you know, and I'm there and, you know, we're all hooked up with the stuff. We've got mics and the little headlamps and it's all stuff. And so he's, he's leading us down there and whatever, but I'm just like, just, Mountains of mountain stuff. So it, it didn't smell horrible, but it's just kind of funky. So we go in there. And so there were like different levels in the cave. And I, I don't want to make it sound like it was like deep in the bowels of the earth. I mean, it wasn't as far as caves go. This was not, you know, the deepest in the world, but it was, you know, it was, it was down a fair amount. So we had to go through a couple places and there were places where it was like you had to, you know, really, you know, get on your hands and knees and, and this and that. And it was a bit of a tight fit, but it was fine. And I'd done a little bit of splunking in the past, but not a lot. And there was some stuff. There was there was a whip scorpion. There were a couple, you know, scary things in there. Uh, but the, the the main thing was the roaches. So just like Ew. tens of thousands of roaches, maybe uh, hundreds no. of thousands. Nope, I won't be there. Fuck that. And <laughs> and so we're in there, and we're going down deeper and deeper, and there's just roaches. As so we're flashing the light there. Uh, and you can see this in the in the in the if you if you watch the video, there's a I have a couple photos I can I can show you. But so anyway, so go down there. We're going down there, and so and of course he, Josh is trying to make it dramatic because I mean I'm not knocking him, but you you have to make something out of it, right? And so you're down there, scary stuff. So we're going down there, and then we're down there maybe three hours or something. And of course we're getting farther and farther from the surface, but also water, cold cokes, lunch, things like that. So we're we're getting down there and we're we're I'm I'm just going along for the ride. I'm like, yeah, let's check this out. Let's see what we can find. So we finally go into this 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 deepest part. And so uh we're in this in this fairly big room, and it's kind of it's kind of warm because of course we're also exercising and you know sweating and this and that. And plus we got lights on us part of the time. And some of it was uh, was uh was um was infrared. So we go down there. And we're standing there, and so Josh wanted to sort of go ahead with with the camera guy. He's like, "Oh, you guys stay back there. I'm going to go ahead." So yeah, that's cool. So he's doing his thing, and I'm just I'm just remember very clearly. I'm just like I'm just like tired, and I've been up. And I think call time was like seven, and I'm just like I'm just like I'm hungry, and I'm tired, and I got to take a leak, and I'm just I'm just miserable. <laughs> and um, and so I'm standing there, and then the problem was that I was being dive bombed by bats. So there's lots of bats in there. So the bats are swooping down, like coming towards my head. They didn't hit me but because you know they're they're very agile. But they're you you can you can like see bats coming at you, <laughs> and I'm like, oh really? So I'm like, and again, it wasn't frightening. It was just sort of more annoying. It was a little little, little scary. So then I was like, okay, well, let me let me just let, let me just like you know sit, sit down on this on this boulder. The nope. problem was, as you can imagine, that I realized that had I sat on that boulder, within 40 or 50 seconds, I would be covered in roaches. Because true. I'd be sitting there and the roaches are like, they're all over the walls. They're, they're oh. I mean, everywhere you step, you're stepping on roaches. And and probably, you, and, and I expected they knew each other. So they're like, you just killed Bobby. <laughs> I and know, so they're like, like fucking attacking you and shit. Yeah, yeah. This is, oh, yeah, I'm that. like, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I hope, I'm hoping you guys get this on film because this could be my last thing. Yeah, so, right? <laughs> exactly. So like, I, so, like, I don't want to stand up because I'm tired and I'm being diabolized by bats. And I don't want to sit down because then I'm going to be covered in roaches. So I'm just like, oh, let's just finish this up. Anyway, so uh, we ended up getting out of there. Um, and uh, anyway, that was, that was, that's my, that's my. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> that is the torment that we go through. Well, mostly Ted. I haven't gone through that yet. Um, <laughs> to get you the story. I wouldn't mind going in the cave, but roaches I was going, out. That's some Indiana Jones like Temple of Doom. It shit. is. Like, it is. It, it was. It was pretty cool. That that's that? that's pretty cool. I mean, but, and, and I think one of the reasons they did it was I think the producers. Um, I think they're used to like experts. 
um, some right. some of them are experts, some of them are actual experts who are just like, yeah, you know, you can come to my office and we'll talk, but you right. know, I'm not I'm not leaving the office. I'm like, jungle, man, let's scuba go. diving, caves, Let Antarctica, man, let's do this. They're like, all right, we can use you. So damn right. Anyone watching that's producing a show, <laughs> I will do that because I, I, that's, that's amazing. I love getting into it. I love, even with all the roaches, I would still do it just because Indiana yeah. Jones, like that's, yeah, yes. you need to go next time. Next time, let's, next time Josh gives no. me a call, I'll be like, bring Kenny in this one, man. Uh, let's, mm -hmm. let's go find Chupacabra. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. What do we, what do we got next? Don't. Can uh, uh have distinctive teeth? Okay, you mispronounced it. It's actually canid, Kenny. Canid. Uh, and the answer okay. is yes. Um, I'm just kidding, but no, you really did. Uh, so here's the answer. So I saw that. So, um, <laughs> wow, wow. Wait, like they do on Friends. What does Ross do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is why I only come on every year or two. Okay. Okay. That's right. okay. No, no, no. Like JD has you. <laughs> JD has an excellent question, um, and so he, so this this actually goes back to the forensics of the chupacabra and the illusion of vampirism, right? Because here's the deal. So I spent not a lot of time, but I spent probably a couple weeks researching the mouth structures of vampires. So uh, there are real vampires, that is, animals that suck blood, leeches. Um, uh, mosquitoes, for example, and things like that. Um, and then there are things that are said to suck blood, but in fact can't. And as as JD mentioned, um, uh, canids cannot suck blood, like literally cannot. It is physically impossible for these animals to suck blood. And the answer is pretty obvious if you've ever owned or even seen a dog, which is that they don't have the mouth structure, right? In order to, in order to, to suck blood, you have to be able to create suction with your cheeks. Um, but if it's, if it's, if, if you know, you, the blood sucker, blood sucker. your blood suckers, right? So, so, I mean, you can, you can bite something, but you can't, you, there, there's literally no physical way that a dog or coyote or a canid can extract blood. Now it can bite you and you can bleed out, right? but there's no, it's literally impossible to do. And then I also looked at the digestive structure. So for example, um, animals that's, that 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 suck uh, blood, they have a they have they have difficulty digesting it because blood is of course iron rich, and you can actually have iron toxicity. Uh, so animals that actually literally do suck blood, such as such as leeches, um, they that they they have structures inside their digestive system that allow them to not 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 you know not not have it be toxic to them. And so this is why uh, I think in, in, in one of the last uh, pages of the book, I have a list of characteristics uh, of if, so I basically said, look, um, if you think what you have is the chupacabra, here's a checklist, right? Here is literally what characteristics your alleged suspected chupacabra would have to have in order for it to actually be the chupacabra. And one of them is uh, specific digestive uh systems and um and a mouth structure that could suck the blood right and please put it behind the ice cream in the freezer well there's that that mm -hmm. i so I, i'm gonna jump ahead here i have a question like you said that they <laughs> this person had the frozen head in yes. their freezer where'd the rest of the body go um <sighs> like did they actually like bring this body and say oh you know what it's too big it won't fit in oh there we go we're good uh you know that's a good question i don't man you never asked that question well no 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 the, the, so the, here's the thing she actually said she found two which i think is doubly <laughs> du doubly dubious if you will so uh in in her house mind you uh in her living room she, at least when I was there, she has a full stuffed chupacabra, coyote, dog, whatever. Um, so but she, it, she has a whole body, like stuff. Well, yes, yeah. So she, again, okay. she has two of them. I, and so, so she's, she's got at least, I mean, for all I know, I mean, if, if your bar is that low, you can find hundreds of them. <laughs> you know? So, like, immediately, and I, I know I'm jumping ahead, were there spikes? 
on the no. back of it? No, no. Oh, okay. No. Uh, it didn't match it, her description. It did not. So, in okay. fact, here is so, and, and again, I go into this in the book, but basically, so so there's a couple problems. So, and again, not to go too, too deep in the weeds here, but at one point, so, you know, when, um, when I politely and diplomatically said, you know, Phyllis, um, I think this might be sarcoptic mange. Um, this is why, I mean, this is a known thing. You're a rancher. Presumably you're familiar with mange. Um, you know, this, this might explain, um, this might explain why this, this particular, uh, poor animal has no, uh, has, um, uh, is, is, looks as creepy as it does. And she's like, well, no, that's not possible because, because usually with mange, um, there's some tufts of hair left along the spine. And she said, this animal is completely hairless. Like, you know, like it's, it's you know, it, this can't be it. And if you look at her <laughs> photograph, so, so to, to take a look, Kenny, just do me a favor here. So uh, look on page, um, you, you're going to see where I'm going with this pretty quick. <laughs> look, look, let me see if I can, so look on page uh, da, 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 of my book. Uh, where the hell is it? Uh, oh, there we go. It's on page uh, 101. So there's a photograph. Now, this is a photograph that she took. I did not take this photograph. This is her photograph. So tell me if you can see any fur on the spine, because I can even see it even in this crappy right video. Right there. Yeah, right on top. Yeah. On so the head, right there. But but yeah. Kenny, Kenny, no, no. She told me flat out, no hair at all. It was completely hairless. I'm like, did you look at your own photo? Because there's clearly, anyway. There's clearly hair. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and again, I don't mean to make a big deal about it, but but that is one of the signatures of, of sarco sarcoptic mange is there there is typically some hair left on the spine exactly as appears in her photograph, despite mm -hmm. her saying otherwise. Wow. Okay. All right. Next question. Um Actually, I'm looking. I'm, I'm wow. I'm, I'm looking because I, I looked up uh, Puerto Rico can, canid teeth, and I'm looking at pictures here. And I'm going to show. I'm going to show. I'm going to share this because this this is actually pretty cool. Um, let's see here. There we go. All right. So I'm looking at the big picture over here, and this is. The pictures out of your book, and it looks like it matches pretty good with known species. Um, yeah, there's really nothing. Uh, there's really nothing distinctive about it. Um, and you know, the 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 she, you know, again, she kept coming back to things such as, uh, oh, and I'll <laughs> just remind me, you're, you're going to love this one, so I'll, I'll say that for a second. But she kept coming back to these sort of like little sort of like. Yeah, but right, like okay, um, yes, there's a little bit of hair. I noticed that it had no hair, but you know, but so, but so every time I brought this up, and so she said, okay, yes, it's true that sarcoptic mange can can uh, can you know can can do things, including to the mouth structure, or not to the mouth structure, but for example, it, it can it can make the teeth appear more prominent because it actually it actually pulls the the, yeah. the skin back, right. And so, but she kept coming. So I would point this out to her again, very politely and diplomatically. And she would sort of come back as like, well, yeah, but this is different, this, that, and this, and the other. Um, and, and again, it was, it was like, you know, I, I couldn't win because no matter what I point out to her, she just sort of has this, well, yeah, but, yeah, but. And I said, look, the, the, the structure is the same. This is clearly a canid. The DNA says it's a canid. And then at one point, so she says, um, at one point, she she talked about how well um, uh, she talked about how it had glowing eyes, and uh, she she talked about how that 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 uh, that that um, that old depictions of it had glowing red eyes. I'm like, well, okay. Um, and Kenny, as you know, I've done some research into glowing eyes of monsters, particularly Mothman. In fact, in your experiments, yeah. In fact, at one point, not many people know this, but at one point, when I was in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, on a TV shoot for Mothman, I called you up and you helped me rig up a little. Yes. I get your, <laughs> that was a fun thing. Anyway, that was good. Uh, so, so at one point, she's 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 talking about how 
uh, how uh, chupacabras uh, since antiquity, and again, problem right there because there are no chupacabras <laughs> since antiquity, but that aside, ha had had glowing eyes. And she's like, well, it's it's like in photographs, right? Where you have people who, um, you know, people who are who are uh, who are fair skinned, uh, who have red eye, uh, the the red eye in photographs. Now, again, lots of problems with this. Number one, it's not just people who are fair skinned, as you know, it's yeah. it's everybody with with eyes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and 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 second, I'm like, Phyllis, that's a function of the flash. Like that's yeah. so you what you're describing only appears in photographs. Why? Because it's a function of the photograph. It's right. <laughs> there's right. this like right. th this idea. I mean, like literally nobody in, you know, in 1997, I mean, that's not quite true. I mean, if you look, there are a couple wild stories early on, but again, there there's nobody's talking about, you know, uh, flashlight eyes. So anyway. All right, let's let's try. We got a bunch of questions. Let's try to, to shotgun some of these because uh, yes. I, I want to get to as many as possible. All right, what does chupa chupa prints look like? Uh, good question. Uh, there's a couple of photographs in, in the book. Um, uh, so uh, in order, and again, great question, right? Because you know, typically in these investigations, the the question is compared to what? What, right. what are we comparing it to? Right? Oh, this is a Bigfoot print. Compared to other Bigfoot prints, compared to <laughs> known Bigfoot prints. Oh, this is a ghost photo. Compared to other ghost photos that were similarly <laughs> dubious. Like, Don't get me started. We're gonna be like a. Whoa! What's that? What's that? Oh my God, Donna's calling an ambulance. I did that from here. Stop that! Oh, it's wow! Wow! Nice. Don't get violent. Don't don't pull oh. a Will Smith on us. So, um, oh, whoa, <laughs> I, whoa, slap right. me. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so, so again, this, it's an excellent question. Um, and, and so, um, so again, what, what do people, what are people doing it? So, uh, so there were two sources that I used and again, with the, with the clear caveat that I put in the book that we don't know what they look like if they exist at all, like all I can go by is what people claim chupacabra prints look right. like. Right. That's all I that's all I can do. So I did two different things. I um I went to uh, a a um a, a museum Museo Loco, uh, which is a small museum uh, in Manhattan. It's it's since closed, unfortunately. It was run by a uh, a fire eater friend of mine named um, Johnny Fox. And Johnny Fox was a was was a fire eater and a sideshow performer and this and that. Uh, he sadly died a few years back, but when I was last, when I was in 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 Manhattan many years ago, uh, among his museum of oddities, was an alleged chupacabra foot. Uh, so I photographed it, and I there's a photograph in the book. There's a photograph uh, in there, yeah. Okay. <laughs> there's a book in the book, exactly. So um, so I, I I looked. So that's one thing, and it lo it looks a lot like a, a non chupacabra foot, to be to be honest. Uh, th there you go. So there's, so there's that. Um, and then I also, dis I also at one point, and I can't remember where this was, it could have been at a Bigfoot conference or something. I photographed in my files, um, files back there. I photo, I photographed alleged, uh, Chupacabra prints that were, I think taken in, in Florida, if I'm not mistaken. And these looked a lot like dog prints, frankly. And they looked very, very, none of them look like dog prints. They look like somebody had faked them. Like someone had like taken a dog's paws and like pushed it into the sand anyway so that's what i originally did and so um so that's what all i all i could go on again i didn't give it much credence and i'm very clear in the book hey this is all sketchy it's you know it's all it's all who, who knows but so w when i went to nicaragua and i went to the jungle um i hired a guide and uh and the guide took us around and i asked him about the chupacabra i said you know do you think this is real if they existed what would they look like what's your understanding of what they are and and again in, in the book you can find a photograph of the two of us looking at prints uh in the jungle trying to figure out what they might be cool all right next up wow we got a lot of questions <laughs> i love it oh is your book an ebook I honestly don't know. I think it is. Buy the book. Buy the Honestly, book. you know what? 
I, I understand the the ease of ebooks, but mm, I, I'm a purist. I love the feel of a physical book. I, I have to have it. I, I have to have a real book because I do write notes in them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I highlight stuff. I flag stuff. So buy the book. Buy, buy. It's only a couple of dollars. Buy. <laughs> <laughs> By the book. Oh, and All by right. the way, as long as we're talking about books, I should mention that uh, there's a there's a brand new book um, uh, titled North American Monsters. And if you look at the design on the cover, you might recognize that I drew it. Oh, uh, oh yeah, it's your chupacabra. <laughs> it is my chupacabra, and uh, and so it, it's it, it's basically about uh, con it's contemporary legend and folklore. So it, it's it's aimed at folklorists, but it has uh, Windigo, Jersey Devil. Uh, uh, Bigfoot and I have a, a cropsy for those who know the cropsy story is fascinating. Anyway, I was I was invited to to do a chapter on that, and uh, I was edited by a, a folklore colleague, a, a friend oh. of mine. Uh, so I have a chapter in there, and it, it's pretty cool. Like I keep track of what you're doing and and what books come out. And I was I, I there was slowly I was slowly getting pissed off. Like what the fuck? You published a book and I didn't know about it. <laughs> like what what's going on? But as long as you only have a chapter in it, I'm good. It's only one chapter. Um, uh, yeah. So, um, uh, but yes, yeah, so it's. I mean, honestly, it's. It's a. I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm enjoying. I haven't read the other. The other. I don't know. Ten chapters or something. Uh, actually, wow. Seventeen chapters. Nineteen chapters. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> the, there's more the more I look at it. Anyway, for for people again, I'm not. I'm not flogging the book. My name isn't on it, but. I don't get any profits right. from it, but if people are interested in in the folkloric side of monsters and cryptozoology, uh, that's a good place to start. All right, next question: When did her story air? By her story, I assume you mean uh, Madeline Tolentino. I think so. I think, I think so. I think exactly. yes. Um, her story didn't actually air. Uh, so what happened was that, uh, and it was fascinating going back and reconstructing how the legend emerged and went from her neighborhood to Canovanus, which is a suburb of, of San Juan, to Puerto Rico, to Texas, Florida, to global. So it was just, again, from a folkloric perspective, it was just fascinating to sort of see how it unspooled. Um, but what had happened was, I mean, I don't I don't mean to say that she's never appeared on TV because, I mean, I'm sure you can find a couple of clips of her. But again, by the time that the Chupacabra really took off, she'd been left behind. Um, nobody, I, I think I was the first person, I think I asked her, I said, you know, your sighting was in 95. Uh, she's like, yeah, you're the first person that's talked to me about it, asked me about it in, you know, 12 years. Wow. Um, because again, it was, it was not, ever, she was sort of forgotten about. And because she was not, she wasn't really relevant to mangy coyotes in Texas. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, that was sort of my, my investigational insight was realizing, no, this is actually important to understand the origins here and where it came from. And, and that's how that part of the mystery was solved. Uh, but in terms of like her, so again, there was not a, even to this day, there was not a full good skeptical documentary on that. So if there's any documentary filmmakers that want to do, I mean, the whole story is fascinating and I would, I'd be happy to participate. Last I heard Madeline is still around in, in, in Puerto Rico and so on. Um, of course, you know, some of the experts are dying off, but um, anyway, so, so, so anyway, so her to get to get back to the question. So basically her story was sort of, as I mentioned, sort of co-opted by, by UFO buffs and extraterrestrial believers and so they sort of uh they sort of put it out there uh but she was pretty qu qu pretty quickly lost in in the stuff so you can find her interviews i mean i interviewed her several times there's the there's the one in, published in scott corrales's book in 96 okay. on a couple other places but she's not mentioned much these days because again the the story passed her by pretty quickly right hmm. that sucks cool all right next what was the most difficult video or picture you ever investigated to explain? <laughs> I guess, uh, like how hard something was to explain. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if this means the chupacabra specifically or, um, or just in I general. I guess in general, it, it sounds like it's in general. Yeah. Um, the hardest one to explain. That's a good question. I think probably my answer would be um, the the Mancy Champ photo. Um, which you know, Joe Nickel and I did research on. You can find it published in Skeptical Inquirer. 
Uh, there's a couple chapters in, in our book, Lake Monster Mysteries. Um, and I would say that's probably, it's probably the one that I'm best known for. It's one that I put the most work into. Um, yes, there you go. Um, and, uh, that was, that was a difficult picture to, to analyze. And I mean, there, there, I mean, I could talk for two hours on, in fact, uh, for, uh, for people who, who know my podcast, uh, Squaring the Strange with Pasquale and Celestia, we did a whole show on that. So if you're interested, oh, check yeah. out Squaring the Strange. Uh, there's a whole hour and change of us talking about champ, but basically it was the most famous photograph of any lake monster ever with the possible exception of, of course, the famous one from Nessie, which was later debunked as a hoax. And it was, it was taken in 1977. It was published in 1981. And uh, it's sort of like the quintessential lake monster photograph of the 1980s or really since, since the time. I mean, there's basically two famous lake monster photographs of the 20th century. First one is the, the Christian Sperling one, the, the surgeon's photo from yeah. 1930 something of Nessie, which again, Later, later shown to be a hoax. The second one is is this one that I'm talking about, the Mansi photograph. Um, and so you know, we're so it, was, it, it took a lot of sort of digging and trying to figure out, well, what could this be? And as with as with uh, Madeline Tolentino, right? I I went to Joe and I went to Vermont and interviewed Sandra Mansi, and um, we talked to her. And I have her on tape, and she again very nice. Um, she told me her story. I've written about it a couple places. Um, she didn't, uh, take us to, uh, where she saw it either because she didn't know where it was or she didn't want to tell us, not sure which one it was, mm -hmm. but in any event, there was some, there was some, <laughs> there was some vague, vague stuff there, but that was probably the most difficult picture to, to, to do. Um, and I later, uh, modestly believe that I solved that case. Some people would argue I didn't, but I, I, I believe I did. In terms of what she photographed, and and I did that not not just by going by the photograph because the photograph itself is is ambiguous, right? By definition, right? If it was clearly X, then we would know it's clearly X. It's it's clearly an elk or a tree trunk or a monster over else. So it's inherently ambiguous as all these things are. But what I did was, in, and I won't go too far down because I know I don't want to go too far off topic. But what I did in that case was. I, I did something that, that that was largely missed by other other researchers, which was that I took both her photograph and her story of that photograph, and I combined the two. So you can't just go by the photo because she was there. She can tell us what happened before, what happened during, what happened after. The photograph, as Kenny knows, it represents a millisecond in time, unless it's a long exposure. But anyway, right. so but so all we're seeing in that photograph is what something looked like during one second of one time, one period it, of time. Yeah, it's probably like one thirtieth of a second, right? Of, of right. time. Yeah. Yeah, and so, 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 what I brought to it was 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 saying, okay, we have the photograph, we have her story. How do these two come together to help explain what happened? Uh, and you know, and anyway, I, I'll, I'll, I, you know, I'll. Spoiler alert, it was almost certainly a tree trunk that had, had surfaced and bobbed around and sunk back down. And I say that because that's what she described. Again, I'm not, I'm not retroactively putting words in her mouth. That's what she described. She described something that emerged, bobbed around for a bit, and then just sunk back down slowly. Right. It didn't turn. It didn't do anything. Uh, it, it didn't do anything that you might expect an animal to do. And when I asked her what the texture was, she said crevicy like bark <laughs> i'm like boom <laughs> i'm like do we have that joe do we have that on tape was the recorder okay okay um like mm -hmm. bark like on a tree yeah okay yeah. well is it i'm just spitballing here is it possible that would you and, and of course she she didn't believe it she she you know, she, she sadly she died a few years back. Um, again, lovely woman. I have nothing but respect for her. Uh, like Madeline Tolentino, I think she was sincere. I don't, I've never called her a hoaxer. I don't think she's a liar. I think she simply misunderstood something she saw. Anyway, long way of going back to to the question from John. Uh, thanks for the question. Awesome. All right, what do we got next? Oh, oh 
Whoa, Sorry. whoa, whoa, we're all over the place. How long do you think it will be before members of Congress die in an investigation? Do you think Chupacabra has died out? Uh, well, um, yeah, I uh, I don't think, so. I'm guessing Congress has more pressing matters at the moment. Than the Chupacabra. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm guessing, um, you know, sometimes I look at Ted Cruz and I think, that dude could be a chupacabra. Um, but um, I just, the, the, the face, the structure, the, the sort of sketchy, shady. Um, and, 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 you know, as far as it dying out, I mean, you know, it was, it was, um, you know, I, I think one of the last lines, maybe the last sentence in the book is, you know, the chupacabra um, is dead. Long live the chupacabra. Uh, yes. because you know, it's it, in the freezer. It, well, it, it's in Phyllis's <laughs> freezer, sure, or maybe it was on, maybe it's on a barbecue by now. I have no I idea, know, right? Um, <laughs> but but yeah, so you know, I, I think that, um, so you, you know, as, as long as you know, it almost certainly didn't exist and never existed, and I think I, I laid out a pretty good case for it. But again, that doesn't mean that people aren't going to continue to see it. And the same thing with, with Bigfoot and Nessie, because as long as there is some ambiguity, as long as there are enough ambiguous sightings and, you know, dead animals and mangy dogs and this and that, somebody's going to still call it a chupacabra. It's, it's never going to go away. Um, no. this, this is something that has achieved legendary status. It, it because it jumped continents. It, it jumped. It literally jumped from Puerto Rico to to like Texas. Um, yeah. And you're going to continue to see these stories. And even if it's not the owner, uh, let, let me say this right. Even if it's not the owner of the property that captures this this animal that most likely suffering from some kind of mange. Um, you're going to have the media showcase it and, and exploit it as, hey, this could be, or or actually the headline would be, is this a chupacabra? <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, you're exactly right. And and actually, uh, just you, just real quick, that's actually one of the one of the really interesting parts about the chupacabra is that is that when you look at what what its definition was right what did people think it was right. originally one person thought this was the chupacabra and this is more or less what she described give or take so so the chupacabra went from being a very specific clear detailed description of this right. bipedal spiky back thing it then expanded uh in in from the late 1990s to, to 2000 where people were seeing sort of similar things, but they added a couple of details, is which is of course classic of folklore. And then in the year two thousand, as I mentioned in uh, in in Managua in, in in Nicaragua, this rancher Jorge Talavera saw the the allegedly the first four legged chupacabra, this, this dead uh, canid thing. Um, and at that point, suddenly it had four legs, and suddenly it didn't have the spikes. Suddenly, and then over time, it became anything dead that anybody can't immediately identify, which right. is why to this day, you know, a washed up uh, raccoons and otters and yeah. uh, just anything Bear. dead that somebody doesn't know what it is. Someone says, could it be the chupacabra? Even, right. even if that clearly has no connection whatsoever to not only the original chupacabra, it has no connection to the sort of second version of chupacabra that's emerged from like, you know, 2000 to now. I mean, it, it, it's funny. Uh, funny like in sarcasm but funny seeing videos over the last couple of years over the last couple of decades where you you see like one one that comes to mind is clearly to me a raccoon it's clearly a raccoon in a cage eating and it's eating exactly how a raccoon <laughs> eats i remember that yeah yes and it, it's suffering from mange and it, it doesn't have any hair so it looks weird but it's still a raccoon. And, and and the headlines were like, oh, this is Chupacabra. We we caught it. And I, I believe it was in Texas where, I, where I, yeah, I think it was there. actually, yeah. yeah. And it, it's just it, it's amazing to me that this 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 rumor, this is one of those it, it's like one of these stories that slips through the cracks where where 
it, it's not readily solved. It's it it is solved. The whole mystery, like on the 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 the, the global scale, it is solved. But you're going to have these little um, stories that pop up. Sure. Where it's a creature that is suffering from some kind of disease. The locals don't know what's going on. They either trap it or kill it. And in the case of the raccoon, they trapped it. They don't know what it is. So the headlines immediately go for the supernatural. Well, the the, 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 the frustrating <laughs> thing to me, and, and I can't, I, I, I remember very clearly being just really pissed off at this, is I would talk to people. Who would who would believe apparently sincerely that they had uh, they had either an actual chupacabra or a victim of the chupacabra, and except in a couple cases that I discuss in the book, for example, Phyllis Canyon, for the most part, they didn't investigate. I'm like, well, no, why? Well, you know, is the chupacabra victim, and it was all drained of blood, and you know, and I said, oh, where is it? Let me see it. Let me like, oh no, I buried it uh, last week, and you know, it's 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 three feet under. I'm like. If, if you really and sincerely believe that this is the, the, the your dead animal, your, your goat, your chicken, whatever else, was killed by this mysterious worldwide famous thing, then let's dig it up and get a medical examiner. I will pay for it. I will pay to have the damn thing thrown on a truck and bring somebody out there and have an investigation done on it because it's not done. And it says over and over and over again, you see these 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 you know lay people or these ranchers or whatever else, and they're not doing basic investigations. Like if you want to know where it is, bring in the scientists. Don't just like, well, wow, this is weird. Let's go bury it. That's not how you solve mysteries. Right. Exactly. I think I think the list of things that we are willing to pay for <laughs> is just gonna grow and grow over the years. Because yeah, I'm the same way. Like the first thought. When you're describing this story, is let's dig it up. You know, there's a body buried three feet down in your backyard. Let's go dig it up. Let's go figure out what's going on. What and the is same, it? and you and I see the same thing with 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 you know, with people with ghosts, right? You talk to somebody and they're like, "Well, we think there's a ghost here," and you say, "Well, why do you think so?" Well, you know, there's a sound, and you know, there I, there's a there's a smell in the garage. And we're like, okay, did you investigate? No. I there's a there's a sound, there's a smell in the garage. What well, 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 it, it's a ghost. I'm like, no, no, you you hey, hey. <laughs> 36 seasons of ghost adventures has taught me <laughs> this is a ghost. <laughs> you know what? Boom, mystery solved. <laughs> All right. All right, we gotta go. We still have All right. a couple questions. Let's let's try to get through these. Is there a relation between chupacabras and Santeria and other Latin American African religions? I hope I said that right. You did say that correctly. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. The answer is no, not really. Partly because, again, the chupacabra really only emerged in 1995, whereas Santeria is more of a, a syncretic religion. Of course, with Afro-Caribbean, you have it you know, brought over by the slaves from West Africa primarily. Okay. So um, there's no real particular connection because and keep in mind that again, you know, Chupacabra is is Puerto Rican, um, American. Um, so, I mean, that's not to say the Santeria doesn't exist in Puerto Rico, but it's much more common in other parts of the Caribbean than, than, than you know, America itself. Okay. So there's no particular connection in terms of, of religion. I mean, the, there's no particular religious connotations to the Chupacabra, except in so far, as I mentioned, uh, people who, who, you know, Pentecostals or others who want to use it as a symbol of Satan or evil. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. Got through that one. Greg, are there any other cryptids that have totally changed appearance but kept the same mythology? Ooh, good question, Greg. Um, changed appearance. Well, you you know you, you get into lycanthropes, right? So you know werewolves, uh, things that change appearances. Um, I'm I'm reminded of uh, of you know again werewolves, uh, and there's not just werewolves. There's were tigers, were rabbits. I mean, the, werewolves yeah. are the most dramatic and sensational. But I mean. People have been claimed to transform into other animals all the time, including, of course, uh, in in witch folklore. I right. Agree. So, the, I agree. yeah. 
So yeah. <laughs> I, I, I buzzed enough that I was so close to saying something that was going to get me in trouble for the rest of the weekend. You know what? So it's a good thing you didn't. Like transform into a bitch. Yeah. Oh. I wouldn't say that. But I wouldn't say that out no, loud. No, you didn't say that. It's no, on the record. I didn't. I didn't. Because I right, fuck. no, but but saying, so, I mean, so that, that's one of the things, right? It's like witches are said to be able to turn into different animals, including familiars, of course. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, and, you know if, for example, here in here in New Mexico and elsewhere, uh, we have the, the spirit uh, La Llorona, which is said to take the form of owls or whatever else. So that there's lots bad. and lots of, but again, if you're talking about cryptids specifically, which is what the question is, um, you know, werewolves, things like that, um, there is also the... Um, uh, the name is escaping me at the moment. There's the, um, the oh the selkies uh, in 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 the UK where you have uh, these these uh, beautiful women that turn into uh, seals. Basically, they put on skins and on. It's sort of a version of the mermaids, where uh, they 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 live in the water, but then they can take the human form. Okay. So those are the main ones that I'm thinking of. Okay. Cool. What else we got? Uh, looks like we have a here we go. What do we got? We got Bob says, since you have an educated degree, education degree, here's a question for you. What important lessons about investigations do you want folks to know? Important lessons investigations. Uh, I, I don't mean to sound self-serving or by my bookish, but <laughs> by my book. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, my scientific, my SPI book is probably, uh, yeah. I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to. But I mean, literally, that's that's why I wrote that book, and also the, um, I mean, there's lots of lessons there, um, and also in, in the ghost book uh, dealing with ghost investigations specifically. I, I'm gonna interject here. Usually, when I when I go through books, I I highlight and flag because it, there's things that I don't agree with or that I um, that I want to write about and, and come back to. But in rare cases, there are a lot of flags. In case with this one, where it's good information, where it's like, oh, thank shit, you. this is, I mean, I mean, I've said this before, and, and I've said it many times without you being on the show, but you are one of my mentors. So when I read books like this, there's a lot of good information that, I, like, this is what I base how I do things on. So well, thank you, that very kind of you. There, there, there's a lot of stuff in here. It's good information. It's good advice. It's it's good common sense in, in when looking at weird claims, you know, and, and you just I just I just love it. <laughs> well, no, that that's again that that's very kind of you. I I you know it's I I just do my best to try and you know and and do investigations and to and 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 to do and to write them up and you know not to get off topic, but this is one of the reasons why it's so important to me. And one of the reasons I tr I keep trying to get you to write your damn book is that um, is that you know I mean the, you know science works on precedent right science works on people doing some having some experience or doing some research or doing something right. and writing it down so that people uh, years or decades or hundreds of years later in the, can, can look and say okay this is what this this is what this person did they investigated this. And, you know, there's some current claim or some weird shit that's going on. And look, Kenny Biddle looked at this back in, you know, back in 2000. And here's what he found. Or, you know, Joe Nickel or Ben Matford or whoever else, they have already done something on this so that other people can look at what we did. And I, I'm not putting me up as you know, some model or something, but but I, I think that's the important part of, 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 of why it's important to publish things is so that other people can can look at it and learn from it and and gain from it because you know if you have some experience and and you you know you've done something you've done some research and you don't tell anybody and you don't communicate it then it dies with you right. um and so that's that's one reason why it i i i think not out of vanity but just because i, I think it's important to to have it out there so that other people can can use it i agree i mean it, there's there's I, I guess, like, I get, get into that rut where I'm I'm constantly going from one mystery to the next, and I'm not focusing on, hey, let's get it, collect it, and and put into one published account. But I I do publish the the investigations that I do, mm -hmm. uh, and you do a good job. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, especially coming from you because you're like, you're again, you're one of my mentors. So when I hear something like that, it really means a lot to me. Um, but you're right. You need to get, get that information out there and it's not to it's not to brag. It's not to say, hey, look, I was the first one that did this. It's to get that information out there to show other people, hey, you can do this, too. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put in the work, if you follow the steps or if you find that there's other steps that maybe we missed or we didn't follow and you find an easier path. Absolutely. This, hey, by all means, share it with us because this is a community. I don't like going back to the uh, the Elvis Elvis Presley in Home Alone case. You know that was a case that you started. You you started that you and you started researching that and went to as far as you wanted to go with that. And then I didn't take over and and say even though we joke about it, it, it wasn't like oh I'm going to show Ben Rapper. No 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 you no you did a great job. Yeah, I totally chewed you up. No, <laughs> no, I mean that, and that, no, and I knew that going into. It. No, you're you're exactly right, and yeah, it was something I had time to do, and and I built upon your work because it, it would have taken me so much longer, or or I would not have completed that if you hadn't done the base baseline work. So. Yeah, and it's the same thing with with you know the the joint articles that we did for for SI last year with the entity case, right? So you know, I, right. there was this big thing, and I couldn't wrap my head all around it. I mean, I, I you know I, I dug as much into it as I could, and and I said this stuff is photographs. Um, could I do it? Probably. Do I want to do it? <laughs> Not really. Uh, and look, you you are you are you're you're flat out more knowledgeable about photography than I am. Just just flat out. And so I'd rather have you do it because I, I trust your judgment. I trust you're not going to screw it up. And so I said, give this to Kenny. And 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 that's one reason I think that our investigations really worked well is that I could I could trust what you said about it. And I can't do that with a lot of people, right? Because I there are a lot of people, you know, like oh, they want to collaborate or this or that. And they may be nice people. I'm, I may like them as a person, but they don't have the track record where I, I, I would feel like I have to double check or triple check their stuff if I'm going to quote yeah. them. And yeah. so I think that that was one reason why it really works well. And and of course, you know, when I when I was doing when I was sort of you know coming up and doing the investigations, you know, my my mentors were were Randy and Joe. Um, and, and, you know, and so I, I, I learned from them. I talked to both of them. I read their books. Um, and so really it was one of those things where I'm like, wow, this is, this is a thing that can be done. Um, and you know, and it needs to be done right. And not just some half-assed half-baked stuff, which is most as, 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 as you know, it's it most, most of what's out there is half-baked. It's not because, uh, we're brilliant or certainly not because I'm brilliant. It's because we put in the time and the effort and that is 90% of it. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We got, we, we're almost there. We're, you, you good on time? Yeah. I, I got okay. it. All right. Uh, so, non cryptos, uh, what do you think of all the UFO reports in the media we saw in the past 12 to 18 months suddenly stop? I, I, I honestly don't. I mean, I, I don't know if they suddenly stopped. I think that, you know, UFOs are one of those phenomena that, that, you know, people's attention uh, fuel it. And yeah. uh, when people are more interested in paying more attention to COVID or wars in Ukraine, um, there's less time for, for, th for things like that. So I don't know necessarily that the, the UFO reports have stopped. I think that, you know, these things go in cycles, they go in media cycles, they go in cultural cycles. So I think we're just sort of in between right now. Yeah. And, and honestly, when it, whenever I, I'm approached with uh, a UFO question. I try to answer it because I, I, I have, I have dabbled in it. And so have you, um, mm -hmm. we, we dabble in it and I can give it a, a, a limited opinion, but I usually refer all to Mick West. Yeah. Um, Mick West is like, that's what he does all the time. And he's really good at it. He Mick really West or Robert Schaefer. Those, yeah. those are my two, my two guys. And I, I mean, I was fortunate enough to know Phil class back, back in the day. And Phil was, you know, he was, he was it. <laughs> it was like, you know, yeah. if you have a question about UFOs, the person to talk to, whatever the subject is, is Phil class. Um, 
and and you know he was great and sadly he's been gone for a while now and robert schaefer is still active uh and he does great stuff and mick as well um so yeah and, and that's and that's one thing that i enjoy about the community is that we can we all have our specialties right Right. And so we can all sort of, you know, collaborate and, you know, try and work some stuff out and crowd uh, crowdsource and things like that. So, And that, that's, I mean, I, I've met Mick several times and, and we've hung out with him. We've uh, hung out with him and his wife. And uh, I mean, he's just a genuine guy and very knowledgeable. knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. and, and when you go far beyond what the videos and, and his articles do, um, when you actually get to know him. So yeah, he's always been my go-to guy. So, all right, uh, are we we will there be more audiobooks such as the upcoming America, the Fearful, or the extra <laughs> Uh Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so what's being referred to here is yeah. So my next book um, uh, is going to be titled America, the Fearful. Uh, which is the reference there. And um, I actually just finished the index like basically yesterday. Um, so I sent that into the publisher. I don't know the release date. I'm guessing uh, June or July or something. Uh, and it's basically, it's not paranormal. It's not, it's not mystery. It's more along the lines of my media myth makers book in terms of being sort of social and, and media literacy. Um, I, 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 I'm getting self-conscious every time I mention one of my books, it's like, Oh yeah, I got it right oh! here. <laughs> wow. See, so, yeah, I'm, now I'm just feeling weird about it, but, um, but no, I'm so not yeah. Or anything. Don't worry. I'm not so, uh, so yeah, so, uh, I, I, I'm guessing that, um, uh, I'm, so I, 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 I have done, I've done one audio book, which was, uh, for investigating ghosts. Uh, and I did that. It's the only one I've done. Um, so, and I think somewhere I, at one point I recorded the first couple of chapters of the Jube Copper book. Uh, a lot of publishers, um, they're kind of hesitant to do it unless they, they're sure it's going to be a bestseller just because, you know, right. it, it involves, it's a lot of work. You got to pay for recording studio. Uh, uh, my, my co-host and friend of mine, uh, Pasquale Romero, who was in the chat earlier, um, and my co-host on Screwing the Strange, uh, he actually recorded um, the the audio for uh, for my uh, my investigating ghosts book. So, for those who aren't tired of hearing my voice, and God knows I am, uh, but for those who aren't and actually want to hear me to, uh, narrate uh, my investigating ghost book, uh, that's available. Cool. All right. Are we good? What do, what do we got here? We got. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to answer that one question. So, yeah, that one, you know, where did the beer go for me? Yes, I got tired of it today. Today, literally, I came home from work and I was like, it's itching. I can't stand it anymore. I'm I'm good. And I, I came home, went right upstairs. I shaved it off. And here I am. So you have a baby face for a 50th. There, there you go. <laughs> I was feeling old and I was like, you know what? Let me, let me go back to a little smooth face here. <laughs> All right, so, whew, I love I love when we go over our two hour time limit because that means, and especially when the numbers are still up because everyone's interested and and they love what we're talking about. So Ben, where can people find more about you if they want to look up and and literally find more of you? So yeah, a couple of places. Um, as I mentioned before, I do have a podcast which you've been a guest on several times, Squaring the Strange. Uh, comes out every two weeks. I think there's a fresh episode out, I think maybe tonight. Um, and uh, so as, as co-host with uh, Pascal Romero and Celestia Ward. Uh, and so it's it's you can get it on the all the usual platforms. Uh, you can find me in Skeptical Inquirer magazine, uh, where I do a, a column every uh, every issue. And in some cases, I actually write a um, uh, a column. Uh, sometimes I actually write an article in the in the next issue. It's not out yet, but it'll be out in a couple of weeks. I did an investigation into a mysterious crop circle that appeared opposite Stonehenge no. uh, uh, 20, 25, 26 years ago. It's <laughs> said to be one of the most strange and mysterious and inexplicable uh, crop circles, which of course 
which of course I salivate at. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I, I, uh, I, I did investigation, and I, I think I solved that mystery. I, I, I visited Stonehenge for the first time a couple years back. Anyway, so uh, there, I have a feature article uh, on on that crop circle and uh, the stories behind it, and what I think actually explains it. Uh, you can also find me um, on Facebook. Um, my MySpace page honestly hasn't been updated in a while. Uh, but I'm also on Twitter, so there you go. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to get into my announcement. You stick around. Don't go anywhere. Um, so let's give a shout-out first to our patrons. Uh, Jade Kitten, ZT Golding, John Michael, Jim Clausen, Teresa Kraft, John Kennedy, Melissa Kennedy, and Carolyn D. Thank you, guys. If you want to support this show, um, let me I actually have a... Let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is it? There we are. We have the Patreon that's up in the corner up there. So if you want to support the show, if you like what I do, if you want to keep us going, help keep us going, um, you can go to patreon.com slash Kenny Biddle and, uh, you know, sign up. There's three tiers and I publish kind of like, well, not kind of like, but it's behind the scenes stuff. Um, even today, I have posted early. Oh. pictures of the shirt and donna <laughs> making this shirt actually um so it was a lot of fun um let me get into some of my announcements here oh look at this i don't have to do anything i love it i love having a producer um so saturdays i do a show called three torture souls with dave schumacher and tim vickers it's fun we pick a topic and we we come at it from three different perspectives and it's really fun. Um, tomorrow weekend. Oh, we're talking about cattle mutilations Perfect tomorrow night. Timing. Yes. Perfect. This really goes into it. I, I have to actually start researching because I didn't uh -huh. get it yet. <laughs> I'll um, send to my files. How's that? I was gonna say bench yes. file. <laughs> oh my god, please. I would help. I literally have them in that cabinet right there. The second one down. I have a it's like really? that thing. Because so. uh, the idea came up uh last week about um surgical precision. People that mm -hmm. talk about cattle mutilations that are surgical and there's no way it could be an animal and this and that. So that's what I'll probably be doing tomorrow night or tomorrow during the day going through that. Um, so July 16th, 17th, I'll be actually July 16th. I'll be speaking for Skeptical. Uh, it's a virtual conference. I'm going to be talking about my journey from ghost hunter to skeptical investigator. Um, and what influences and all kinds of stuff like that. July 23rd is the Power Unity Conference in Woodbridge, New Jersey. I'll be up there. Uh, Donna will be there with her Lucky Tiki Creations booth. I'll be up there with my Skeptical Help booth, giving uh, skeptical advice help. and information. Skeptical Help. <laughs> skeptical Help uh, for people in the paranormal that want to come in and ask me questions. And play with some toys that I, I set up, like dowsing rods and pendulums and stuff like that. Uh, August 19th to 21st is the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash, which is probably the most fun conference <laughs> that I go to, that we go, we go to. Both of us will be set up, and there's a lot of parties. We drink a lot. Um, but we also have fun, spread a lot of information. I, I'm able to influence a lot of people. Um, which is fun. I'll be on a, a discussion panel with a whole bunch of ghost hunters. So that should be fun. <laughs> and then October 20th to 23rd, I will be in Las Vegas, Nevada for SciCon. Um, I'm actually taking the big stage this year. Um, I'm going to do a half hour talk. I'm so nervous. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. I know what I'm talking about. I know the title, but I'm not sure the content. I, fine. You just got plenty I'm, time. I'm just going to get drunk and make it up as I go. That's the last <laughs> thing you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, I won't be drunk. Don't worry. Um, so with that said, everyone, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for coming out uh, for Friday night, hanging out with us, talking about Chupacabra. I love it. I had a chance to make a shirt. I mean, that, that, that's, that's my weekend right there. Right. <laughs> In a shirt. Thank you, Ben, for coming out and, and sharing your knowledge, sharing your research and, and just your insight into this. Uh, it was phenomenal. 
Well, so, thanks for uh, inviting me. It's always uh, it's always great to be on. And uh, even though I mean it's sort of a dead mystery, and you know it's it's one I did a long time ago. I it's it's fascinating, and it's got so many different angles into it that I I find it still fascinating today. So, well, you know what? It, it's it's one of those things. Like we talked about, we we touched on it. This will never die. Mm-hmm. It really won't die. It, it it will always be there. There's always going to be YouTube videos about it. There's always going to be a documentary that brings it up. Yep. There's always going to be a new news story that yep. has it in the headline. And as long as that comes up, it's going to be great to actually have a resource where people can go, all right, let's Google Chupacabra. And it'll come up with, with, with this book in front of me. And people can buy it and read it and say, oh, you know what? This is fascinating. The whole history of it. And that's it. It's not just solving a case. It's the whole history of it and how you got to that point, which is interesting. So I love it. All right. So with that said, everyone have a great weekend. And remember, never stop learning. And we'll see you next week. See you guys. Bye.